gonna start right now. This is a demo, Student Union, it's a visual novel. I'm not sure what to expect from it though. Okay, one second guys. Blood, dirt, and sweat coat my arms to the elbows, and I can no longer tell where any of it came from. If I keep going with this, I'll eventually be caught. What the hell am I going to do? Turner! A teacher rushes into the office, pushing the door with more force than necessary. I flinch in my seat and sit upright. After taking a step in, she stops. She finds me in the chair across from the empty desk. Oh, hey! You're in my class this year, aren't you? Hey, Mrs. Webb. Yeah, this year is the first. She eyes at me with suspicion. The animation in this is really crazy. And the villagers are doing good, busy with the project, so that's fun. That's cool. Glad you're keeping busy. Her eye, she eyes me with suspicion. What are you doing in here? I was called in on the intercom earlier, so I'm not sure yet. Okay, please keep waiting. She holds back, <laughs> she holds back annoyance, though not very well. As she exits, she closes the door more softly than she opened it. So I'm wondering if this visual novel is where you get to choose things? Not sure. I look at the space around me. This is the first time I've been here. The, an the administration offices are sectioned off from the classrooms, and this one dwarfs the others. Unattended coffee. Or maybe it's tea. It sits on the desk. Steam coming from the cup wafts in the sunlight, entering from the end window. I take a breath while combing the office with my eyes. Actually, by the smell, it's definitely coffee. On the wall, there's frame certificate titled Masters of Business Admit. I can't even read. Frame certificate titled Masters of Business Administration. It was issued from a prestigious university about six years ago. Near the degree are sets of frames arrayed with pin butterflies, a wireframe model of a, okay, I've never heard of this, dodecahedron rests on the desk. Dodecahedron? Is that how you say it? I guess it's this thing. <laughs> Interrupting my fidgeting, and this time without a knock, a well-dressed man enters and greets me with a smile. Hi there, Lane. Thanks for being patient. I am the assistant principal, Mr. Underwood. I must not be in trouble, so I stand and extend my hand. Oh my god, it's scary when they move closer. His smile curves stronger at the gesture and shakes my hand firmly. His grip is stronger than mine. He closes the door behind him, walks to his desk, and seats himself. Go ahead, sit. I heard that you were asking around about odd jobs you could do for the school. I return to the same chair across his desk that I've been warming and lean forward. Yes. Sir, I was wondering if I can make extra money during the school year. I was thinking of saving up for college. Admirable. You are in your junior year, right? Why not get a summer job? I worked at the library downtown over the break. I was trying to figure out something more local. The bus schedule makes it tricky. The Kafka Library. Yes, a bit of a commute. Nearly an hour each way. He drinks from his coffee and looks past me for a moment. Well, I do have something. I have been introducing the idea to a few of the other seniors. But what is your background? I straighten up in my seat a bit. 
I've had this interview-like exchange a few times. I'm from here, so I grew up with a lot of students. Not that I know them all well, but I'm not shy. My grades are important to me. I'm a hard worker, and I've had lots of jobs. Probably more than other students. <laughs> Mr. Underwood seems receptive and maintains eye contact with me. I notice he's thumbing the side of his cup. His fingernail colors white from the pressure. Where else? I worked at the passing gas. The gas station? Yeah, I worked afternoon shifts on weekends for a while. I stock shelves at the grocery too. Also, they sometimes need help with the water treatment plant and hire interns. I've done work there on and off. You stay busy. All your work will pay off and you should feel proud. I grit my teeth and hold back any response. After a couple seconds pass, I nod slightly. Mr. Underwood pats a small stack of papers on his desk. You have excellent grades too. You are a strong candidate. However, something I cannot glean from your file is whether or not you are able to work with little instruction. What I need is a student to take the project and run with it, reporting in weekly. He pauses, waiting for a response. I'm nervous, not from the content of the conversation. Content of the conversation, well content. From something else. My face may betray me, but I attempt to a confident nod. I'd be happy to try. What do you need? I need someone with an entrepreneurial spirit to take on the lead on forming a student union. It is in the in experimental phase, and I am trying to convince the board it is valuable to both the students involved and the administration. Despite an upfront cost. As the president, you would put in a minimum amount of 10 hours in a week. Report to me directly and you would have a small budget. 10 hours will not be a problem. Do you mean a group to represent all the students? As you might know, our school receives federal funding. Our facility is part of the public education system, so our local government is mandated to allocate money to us to help us maintain resources for our students. The amount received may fluctuate when officials change offices, policies, legislation, or state takes in more or less anticipated. Our school system tends to be placed below other priorities. What sort of initiatives, I guess, are more important than school? <laughs> it depends whom you ask. Insurance programs, infrastructure, subs subsidizing local businesses, law enforcement, and assistance to struggling families. At mention of his last example, I catch myself looking at the worn tip of my sneaker and redirect my gaze to Mr. Underwood. Mr. Underwood smiles. You are not going to find many here who disagree that education is important. Many moving pieces play a role in the decision making, but I did not call you in here to talk about that. Our administration receives a cut of the budget and then we craft our school budget from it. Year over year, the student population has been increasing a while. Our funding has been decreasing. Is that why there's no sign up for track this year? That came out more <laughs> accusatory than I intended. We are taking a hard look at all our extracurricular programs. Student representation is not the goal. Service to the school is. We need additional manpower and this is a relatively cheap method. And it presents you with an opportunity to help the school. If you do well and recruit some of your hardworking friends, you will make a positive impact. I cannot make promises beyond guaranteeing your paycheck. I take a deep breath, collecting confidence to put forth my most important question. How much will I be paid? Minimum wage, the same amount you receive from the library. He responded without hesitation. He was prepared. It's disappointing, but not more than I can realistically expect. Mr. Underwood downs the rest of his drink and glances at the clock on the wall. 
Are you interested? I hesitate, but only for a moment. I need this. I'm out of other options. Maybe I can reconnect with some old friends? I equip confidence and address Mr. Underwood. Definitely. It seems complicated, but I can help with whatever you need. Are you sure? This is not a small project. For me either. He glances at the wall behind me again. Yes, sir. What sort of work will I be doing? Underwood smiles. There you go. First, I believe you can support some of our administrative functions. We need someone to man the library here, too, for example. We may also utilize your team for event planning services. We have excess faculty rooms and spacious conference areas. I want to rent those for external events to earn revenue. Oh, like hosting workshops or conferences? I help the library with scheduling seminars. Yes, I need to develop a formal list of your responsibilities and the responsibilities of the union as a whole. Achieve board approval and get some paperwork to you. What you need to do in the meantime is vital. Please recruit at least four other students by the end of, this, end of the week. That will demonstrate to the board that we actually have interested and ambitious students to fuel the program. It will not work if you are the only participant. Oh. Like a bucket of water thrown on a freshly lit match. Mr. Underwood senses my mood swing. You can ask some of your... He seems to catch himself and continues after an awkward lapse. Your classmates for help. It will actually be a great exercise for you in preparing your role as a delegator. We have intelligent and creative students here, and I am sure you will find a handful willing to support their school. Yeah, I can do that. By Friday, then. Yes, all you need- all you- <laughs> all of you need to meet me here, and I'll give everyone an update. And initial push. Do you? The bell rings. Mr. Underwood gestures to the door. You better head to your next period. I would hate to consume more of your time than I should. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out by phone or email. With fluency, Mr. Underwood places his business card in my hand as I stand. It's a neat design. The card lists off office phone number, cell phone number, and an email address. Is it strange to give your cell phone number to a student? He seems devoted. I direct a nod to him and offer a reluctant smile. Thanks a lot, Mr. Underwood. Thank you. He waves as I open the door and move back into the hall. Oof. Collecting my belongings from the last period was easy since I hadn't brought any. Some students' books are still in, still on order and haven't arrived. Most inherited old books. I linger at my open locker in the hallway, Mr. Underwood's card in one hand and my phone in the other. Turner Underwood, assistant principal. I add him to my contacts. What was I about to ask him? <laughs> Should I record my time worked at a specific way? <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> what the heck? I will leave you timekeeping to you. Keep the central written on an electric record for everyone. I slipped Mr. Underwood's business card in my worn wallet. With a metal clack, I close my empty locker. The sound echoes. The students who are shuffling around me have already entered their next classes. Poof. This guy is going to be late. I haven't memorized my schedule yet, so I ease my crumpled note from my pocket. After a confirming glance... I crinkle it back into place and walk. 
At least I know a couple people I can ask for Mr. Underwood's project. During lunch or this afternoon may be a good time to ask around. In the meantime, I'll plan since we don't have any since we don't have many details worked out. Otherwise, I doubt they'll persuade anyone. Two students, myself included, would be guaranteed at least. I'll need three more. Students are standing in irregular circles outside my destination. Groups migrate past me while I approach two students in conversation. Why not? He is strict and lives right next to me. It doesn't matter how hard ass he is or where we hand off. Geez, just help me out like before. I don't know. Evan spots me with a sidelong step widens the circle of two. Why is everyone out here? Forget it, man. Either ignoring or reacting to my interruption, she moves against the flow of the other students. I notice the classroom they have been negotiating near is empty. I think art's canceled today. Why? I begin moving with the flow of the crowd and Evan follows beside me. It's... I don't know. She didn't even come in. And Coach Jean just told us to head to the gym. You mean Miss Webb? Yeah, she... Ross said she was really upset this morning. His eyes look past me and catch a passing classroom door. I instinctively... I follow his darting glance and see nothing but a closed door. He, con he continues doing this with each room we pass, so I decide to ignore it. She looked it. She was trying to find a new assistant principal, but I don't know why. It's weird. What is? I don't know. It's so different this year. Oh, did you? I stumble hard and grip the handrail. But the loose railing provides no support. I release it with a jerk and catch myself on the wall instead of palms open. Beyond the inner railings, a narrow gap separates the flights. The height from the second floor creates more of a potent wake-up call than the smell of Mr. Underwood's coffee. Crap. That really hurts someone before it's fixed. Ha. I write myself and we continue downstairs. Did you ask about a work-study position? Mr. Underwood said he'd like me to start a group like a paid club that helps the school. See, that's weird too. You know about the layoffs, right? And with the way less elective classes. Principal Decker must be desperate, that's all. Mr. Underwood mentioned the school's budget was cut. That's more weird, not less. How can they pay you? There's less staff, but not less work. They have to pay someone to do it, and we're cheap. We? Yep. I face Evan outside the gym entrance with pep in my step. The burst of energy exhausts him. It's minimum wage you'll need to put in around five hours a week. I've got a lower limit of 10 since I'm organizing it. Evan scowls at the floor. As expected, I'm smiling. I don't know. I have a lot of questions, and you can't. We lock eyes. Can I at least think about it? I wanted to do drama club this year. Of course, take your time and I'll text you the details tonight. Conveniently after I figure them out. <laughs> Besides, there might not be a drama club unless someone helps out around here. You said a group? How many people? Three more to get us going. Want me to ask Holly? Probably not her thing. It doesn't hurt to ask. Let's go in now. I think we're late. For what? Everyone's either sitting around or playing ball. Our art class is around 20 members, and there must be well over four classes in here. They might as well have canceled school today. I almost didn't hear Evan over the chatter. Ross might have had the right idea this time. I borrowed an abandoned basketball and joined the idol shooting on a corner of the court. Evan follows along the sideline. So what were you two talking about? 
Nothing really. I mentioned Mr. Un Underwood moved into our apartment building. My shot bounces off another student's just above the rim. So I lift another ball rolling near. How did you find out? He asked me to move a couple boxes. He lives alone, I think. But he seems nice. Sorry I didn't text you back. On my next throw, the ball moves through the net with a swish. That's... it's fine. Got some good sunset shots out there. Did you talk to the librarian? She said they found someone. And the gas station? Nothing there or the grocery. The timing's off and they have enough hands. You know I can do your homework sometimes. Or cover for you. Dano. Thank you for subscribing for 37 months in a row. CEO Claude, Mr. Claude. How are you, by the way? And thank you for the Pride World emote. My next throw misses with the thud from the blackboard. It's fine. I'm going to have the student group. If I do well, it's sure to be steady. Right. So what will you do? Make Mr. Underwood's coffee, I mean mocha. I'm serious. So am I. My shot once again intercepts another student just above the rim. A tall girl approaches us with a relaxed greeting. Hi. Well, she has a six pack. <laughs> she addressed Evan, but respond anyway. What's up? It is better to take turns. I'm briefly confused and glance at Evan. Her message clicks after he nods to the basketball goal. Oh, sorry. She nods slowly and turns. Evan stops her by speaking up, which catches me more off guard than her. Nat, wait. This is Lane. He's a senior too, and uh, at this point I suspect a pattern. Did he become popular with girls? Nat is listening patiently as Evan trails off. The answer is no. Better help him. We're offering a few students a paid position at the school. I just started this group to help the school administration, since they're short-staffed. About five hours a week or so. It's a club that looks very good on your resume when you graduate. You'd be um, organizing events and managing the library or the computer lab. I have no interest. I know she's ripped, Cloud. How have you been, by the way? As she walks away, she catches a stray basketball. She's attractive. I send a smile to Evan. Your pitch needs work. Worked on you, didn't it? <laughs> Aren't you worried? I'll manage. We've got until Friday to get more members. Thanks for the wingman, though. You got it. How do you know her, anyway? Through Holly. She knows everyone. Pulling her in basically means we're set. Like I said. Let's say you're right. Who else? Since I no longer feel confident enough in my multitasking to avoid disturbing that, I lead us to the bleachers. What you said earlier. They need people to manage the library? I sit with my back to the wall. Why can't you just do that? You've... Yeah, it makes sense. Mr. Underwood didn't make it sound like a sole student was an option, though. It's that they don't want to go through the setup for a single person. How much could it even be? Enough that it's not worth it without a substantial program. I don't like it, but you should ask Alice for help. I smile and take census of the students here. This reminds me of S. Death from Akame Got Kill. <gasps> You're right, DeVillers. You've been good, been working and staying safe. I'm glad. Oh, did you see all the new um, emotes? And thank you for, I didn't even realize you subscribed for tier two. Thank you so much. Do you like all the emotes that are now available? I brought back some old favorites. <laughs> 
mean, I thought having the Diva Dab for Tier 1 would be good because it's been Tier 3 for such a long time. <laughs> now you have so many emotes. <laughs> I smile and take a sense of the students here. You're full of solutions today. Today, huh? I approach a brooding guy and interrupt his reclined position. Hey, Kane. No, wait, don't. Evan flinches and reaches out. Kane sits up and, as I approach and greets me with a look of recognition. Sup? <laughs> What's going on with Alice? What? A sudden glare, not the response I anticipated. Your girlfriend? Why isn't she with you? He steps level with me. Then he glances at Coach Jean. Why did he come so close to us? The coach is playing on his phone on the court bench. Kane stands taller and is much more physically imposing compared to other students. And to me. What the fuck are you trying to say, you little shit? <laughs> what? Nothing, I just... You just what? Want to be funny? Get a rise out of me? My collar tightens as he grips the chest of my shirt so forcefully, I wonder if it will tear. No, what are you... Proxies for white flags, my hands raised defensively. He shoves me onto the stairs, the corner digging into my spine. Sharp pain. I wince and writhe. Play stupid fucking games, win stupid fucking prizes. He storms from the stands and into the halls. <laughs> Evan helps me upright. You okay? Probably. They broke up over the break. It's... It was really public. Really? I mean, even I knew. I noticed Nat looking for me from the court. She resumes playing. Well, I'd say that hurt my pride more if my back didn't hurt so much. Jeez. She dumped him, apparently, and told everyone he was a womanizing pig. A failure, a poisonous fool. Specific. She posted it online. I've been too busy working to be plugged in. I know. It only seems to hurt worse when I massage the area, so I stopped attempting. I'll catch Alice over lunch. Think she'll join? I don't know. Probably. Crazy asshole. I spend time recovering in Evan's company until our next class. As my sounding board, Evan helps think out more of the group's jobs. We at least become more familiar with the idea. The din of the cafeteria discomforts me. Energetic freshmen socialize with a few outgoing upperclassmen. The tables kind of remind me of the ones at my school, except there, was, there weren't circles, it was like a whole bench. But it kind of looks similar to this, but a whole bunch. I don't see Evan, but scan carefully for my target. Despite the noise, there are fewer students than last year as usual. I might be wrong about that, since Mr. Underwood said there were more students overall. The room disperses the aroma of the kitchen. Chicken strip day. <laughs> Reliable as ever. I don't find who I'm looking for. But I spot a familiar face. A short girl sits alone at the end of the table. She's staring at her food, expressionless, as if separated by miles. She has cat ears. Is this Ping? Is that Pingla? <laughs> I decide I'll put an end to that and sit across from her. It's funny to see many empty seats around you. She flinches. Dropping her plastic fork. And in, in my school, it'd be a spork. Oh, hey there. Allie is radiant, beaming at me. You're right. Where is everyone? She steals my fork. I was going to ask you that, honestly. Well, this presents an opportunity. Four? Catching up, I haven't seen you since forever. You got huge. 
If you just shrank. Mm. With a grin, I begin <laughs> enjoying my finger food. My vast cuteness has simply reached maximum density. You're dense, huh? With a fork flourish that's a little too close to my, to my face, she retorts without hesitation. You may not like it, but this is what peak performance looks like. I didn't say I didn't like it. She giggles and clears her throat. <clears> throat. Good. Now then, dear wanderer, why hast thou approached my spring after so many years? Weeks, you mean? The break isn't that long. Every day without sufficient worship is another scar upon my soul and affront to my divinity. Awfully needy for a goddess, the library kept me occupied. Working, of course. Boring as usual. Responsible has a better ring to it. What were you doing then, oh great one? She hesitates. Just preparing for the harvest. I think she changed her number over the break. I can read the mood, so she doesn't pry further. Well, I hope my current tribute will make up for my heresy. heresy. Oh boy, she is a character, all right. Yeah, the villa she is. It's a start. Her little fingers trace the edge of her tray. Her untouched food may be a bit cold by now. Things will pick up next week. Speaking of work, though... Oh. Her positive expression dissipates. I'm starting a student union, and we could use a mascot. Interested? She scoffs with a regained smile. That's a new one. Granddaddy didn't mention it. There must be a brand new scheme. Hey, Mr. Underwood's brainchild? Cheap labor? Resume building? Through valiant effort, I avoid talking with my mouth full. Figures, hey, granddaddy said Principal Decker was desperate for new ideas. Are you in? You can sign up on paper, contribute, or hang out as you feel like. I'm not sure about the level of commitment expected, but I don't correct myself. She pauses for a few seconds before shaking her head. Oh, it would be probably stressful. Stressful. Come on, I'll pick up your slack. You won't have to if I'm not joining. She's gripping her tray, the tendons in her hand visible. Okay, okay, I'll just let you know how it goes. Are you gonna eat all that? Oh no, go ahead and tax me. Thanks. <laughs> she grips my wrist as I reach for her food. But know this, the blood debt will be paid. I'll owe you one, okay? Okay, I shall hold you intimately to, to that promise, wanderer. What the hell is this? You missed it thou. Ever gonna get tired of being so silly? It's not silly, it's fun. Don't people make fun of you? At this age, I almost add. My supreme adorability grants safe passage. I can make fun of you if you're feeling left out. Her expression becomes difficult to read, but only for a moment. I'm not. Hey, mind if I sit with you? Evan stands beside the table awaiting permission to intrude. Just as I'm about to tell him it's fine, Holly beats me to it. Another one joins the flock. Please kneel, traveler. I'll just sit. The villager says blood dead. She is into some interesting shit. Yeah, she, it's, she's, she's one of those. What took you? Calculus is no joke this year. I did not like pre-cal and, and I did not like calculus. God. His <laughs> exasperation is palpable. Palpable. Oh my god. With extra newtons, he plops down. Really? Did you try to find your limit? Evan rolls his eyes as a thin girl slides into place beside Holly. Her hairstyle changed over the break, so it takes me a second to recognize her. She looks at me with a grin, which helps my helps jog my memory pretty quick. 
Welcome to the Foul Feast. Hallie bounces with enthusiasm and bumps shoulders with Alice. Thank you. You like Mr. Underwood's class? I respect the man. He's a good instructor. Speaking of, I'd like to talk to you. Oh? I glance at Evan, who expression tells me the plan's off. Mr. Underwood told me about the student union. I'll be joining, of course. Great! As the president, naturally. My smile fades. I've been wanting an opportunity for this for a while, to really start making some changes around here. It took someone new in the admin- blah, blah, blah. It took someone new in the administration to incite the shakeup. But I suppose that's how it goes. I'm glad you're into it, but... Mr. Underwood already agreed. The valid valedictorian leading the charge makes for a compelling sell to the school board. Sensing conflict, Holly shrinks. Evan eats his meal. I'm the best suited for seeing this through. I lean forward on my empty tray. Did he mention how many hours I'd get? He said I'd need to give at least 10 hours weekly to manage the group, but we're not sure how utilized members will be. You can always work less hours. I'll make sure to have someone cover for you. I stand up from the table, tray in one hand, my other shoving into my pocket. Excuse me? Moving away promptly, I slap the food tray onto the recycle step and step into the hall. Oof. I yank my phone to my ear and listen to the dial noise. And eventually, Mr. Underwood's voicemail message. My phone vibrates. I can't talk now. What do you need? Alice wants to be president. Where does that leave me? If Alice would like to try for that spot, the fair approach would be democratic. The founding members will vote for the president Friday. If? I tuck my phone away and return to the cafeteria. I'll excuse herself from our table. I wonder if it's because she was done. Well, I think so. I know so. With that, I can pull a group together in no time. Alice, did you even talk to Mr. Underwood? My confrontation is met with a smirk. What did he say? The president's position will be put vote on Friday. That is quite fair. I can't argue with that, I suppose. Frustrated, I sit. It is, and you're outnumbered. It won't do for you to intimidate others. We both look at Evan, who won't look either of us straight on. I'm with Lane, sorry. Of course, he's consistent. Fine, I'll soon have followers of my own. With an unfused tap on the table, she stands. Well then, gentlemen, I do look forward to establishing, <laughs> establishing bipartisan solutions after my swearing in, in ceremony. Evan and I look at each other in silence. Alice acts uncharacteristically shy about us judging her. For now, I hope to have a spirited competition. I bid you both adieu. I've never heard people speak like this in school, though. After she leaves, I turn to Evan. What were you talking about while I was gone? She was brainstorming ways to recruit people quickly. And? The short version is to make false promises, get lots of students to join on that basis, have the group established, then let things settle however they settle. Seriously, that sounds like a recipe for disaster. Mr. Underwood would lose respect for me if he found out. He might even fire me. Think about it. He Has he given any specific instructions? A few. So it's reasonable, expected even, that a student acting on his own wouldn't get all the details straight, you see? I'm not incompetent. Doesn't matter, he's taking a risk by letting you figure things out alone. He wouldn't be able to justify firing you. <laughs> Future politician divillers, you think so? After it's already set up anyway, and... Stop, I'm not doing that. But you need the money, if Alice does it then I might get less work from the school. Big fucking deal. 
At Mike's snap, he flinches and looks at the remainder of his lunch. Okay. Are you gonna finish? You can have the rest. Thanks. Inelegantly, I pocket his last morsel. And not long after, we move on to finish out the day's classes. Normally, I like the last class of the day, but not this time. A slight shove from behind catches me off guard. I turn quickly. A professionally dressed woman blushes. I recognize her since she's been a fixture of the school for as long as I can remember. Principal Decker. Excuse me, it's a bit crowded in here between classes. She smiles warmly and dusts my upper back. My face flushes and I watch the crowd flowing past us both. It's really okay, no problem. She wades through the students with more care and those that recognize her make a path. I finish walking through the door to my last class. This kind of actually looks like the the chairs I've, I've sat in for um, high school. Except it looks more clean. <laughs> Study hall bothers me. I signed up for this period. That much is true. However, I doubt anyone here appreciates this situation. No textbook to study yet, no assignment to complete, no talking assigned seating. Coach Jean idles on his cell phone. One clever student brought their own books to read, a few others draw notebooks. After a tap on my shoulder and a subtle exchange, a note reaches my desk. Pull the fire alarm, vote. Eight tally marks under yes and three under no. I crumple it into my pocket and to end the game. I'm feeling worn out. Maybe I'll nap. Between the fire alarm and the bell, I'd be covered for alarm clocks. I lay my head to rest my forearms and close my eyes. My head hurts. Aches. I roll my palm under the back of my head, fingering, fingers slipping through my hair to my scalp. The texture of little bumps cling to my hair around sensitive area. Soft clumps collect beneath my fingernails. The heck? Sitting up through a burst of dizziness, I hold one side of the desk for balance and pull my hand in front of me. The ready residue of dried blood stains my palm. I don't think I'm bleeding anymore. Kind of hard to focus. I check my phone's clock. After pressing past the lower low battery notification, I see that it's almost 8.30 p.m. My sore back and throbbing head convince me not to stop and brood. I struggle into the empty hall, each step with increased equilibrium. Though it's dark, I'm able to find the entrance via the faint light of my phone and from the hall windows. The front door doesn't give way. Calm, I try again. It dawns on me that I'm locked into the school. I survey the door, hall, and nearby, nearby windows. No luck in finding an easy exit. Just when I'm about to call Mr. Underwood, my phone dies. Great, camping here isn't gonna kill me, but I'd rather not. I carefully move down the hall to investigate the first floor. Anyone here? My voice echoes. Many of the classrooms are locked, and those that aren't hold no signs of life. As I near a complete pass on the first floor, I hear a single thud from the ceiling. I step closer to the main stairwell, which is poorly lit. Hello? A louder thud replies. Still dizzy. Cautiously, I move up the stairs using both hands for support. There's terrible lighting here. I can't see a thing. I get to the end of the railing at the top of the flight and move my hands and knees for better support. I'm crawling up the stairs while hugging the wall. Better safe than sorry. The boom of a door slamming causes me to flinch. I hesitate, but continue upward. 
Words catch in my drying throat. My hand touches something in the darkness. Something warm and wet like the inside of a mouth. Pulling back quickly, my knee skewed down one stair below. I stop and listen. I wipe my damp hand on my jeans and continue moving up, taking great care to avoid that area. From the top of the stairs, the hall is illuminated illuminated by a lit open classroom. Silently, I move to my feet and and siddle to the door. I slide, I guess slide to the door? I don't know. It's a siddle. I move to my feet and slide to the door. <laughs> I don't know. I peer inside to see wide eyes staring back at me. I cover my heart and jump at the same time she sees me. Her fright flips into irritation. You? What are you doing here? Nothing. What has Turner got you doing now? No, I'm trying to go home. The door's locked. Why are you here? She closes the distance between us. I fell asleep. I couldn't stop it from sounding like an excuse. She glances at the clock. Really? You napped over six hours, huh? I'm sorry. I was embarrassed. I bumped my head at the gym today, and I felt sleepy during study hall. Let me see. She inspects my head with her fingers, and I wince. Her expression softens. Oh, are you alright? Are you alright? I heard a lot of noise up here. I was unpacking and setting up materials for tomorrow's class. There are several cardboard boxes behind your, behind her in the classroom, one of which is empty. Paper, pencils, pastels, markers, newspapers, sketchbooks, and other supplies are splayed out on the floor. I heard a door. Look, let's get you sorted and call your parents. She appraises me. Jeez, you got blood on your pants. Why didn't you tell someone? Looking at my thigh, I can confirm it myself and turn toward the stairwell. What's your name? Lane. My phone died. Mine didn't. What's their number? I look back at her. Whose? Oh, I don't remember. Okay, I'll look it up. Come on then. She takes me by the wrist and leads me to the administrative side. We enter an office door labeled Principal Decker. She motions to the couch after flickering the light. Don't sit down. I obey. The office is plain, but the couch looks expensive. Notebooks and manila folders lean off the desk in a precarious stack. Last name? Fox. She furrows her brow and moves from one filing cabinet to another. Miss Webb? Yes? Did you buy those art supplies? She turns to me... Her butt bumps the paper stack, sending it contents wafting to the floor. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> she goes to her knees to collect the mess, and I help her. Yes, I did. Why? Otherwise, we wouldn't have any. I'll clean this. You can keep looking for my file. She moves a strand of hair behind her ear and eyes me. Then she follows my suggestion. After a few quiet minutes... I've sorted the pages into two separate stacks on the desk. Hey, Yonte, how are you? The trip was good. How are you, by the way? You're good? You guys miss me? And great, yesterday we came back at 4 p.m., but I was feeling really, like, tired, and I didn't want to stream if I wasn't, like, mentally prepped for it. I just wanted to watch Netflix all day, so we watch um, Non Warrior. It, it is such a strange series, but it was really good. <laughs> it was really, it was really weird, but it's really good at the same time. I, I, you can kind of sort of get angry at the main character, but at the same time, it makes sense of because of what she's been through. I opened the desk drawer pull out a half-empty bottle of wine. Uh, don't touch your personal items. 
Miss Webb snatches it from me and sets the bottle back into the desk before closing it def definitively. Sorry. I'm not sure where Sokko is. Maybe Sokko will show up later on. Miss Webb huffs. Also, do you not actually attend the school? Your record is missing. Oh, Mr. Underwood might still have my file. Ugh, what's your address? My record is probably in his office. We can go check, right? It would be rude to intrude when he's not around. I look around at the room. She recognizes the inconsistency too. I'll just drive you home, come on. Wait, you're gonna come back to finish unpacking? Also, thanks for following King's Talks 84. I haven't decided, come on. With impatience, she moves out of the office, turning the lights off on me before I follow. Why don't I help you? We can go twice as fast. You realize you've probably had a concussion, don't you? I feel a lot better after the nap. She spins her heel to address me. You are going home, young man. Okay, all right. Yes, ma'am. Please wait here. She collects her purse from the art room, leaving me alone in the dim hall. My head is still throbbing, so foregoing helping her unpack is probably for the best. I place my hands in my pockets and realize the one which held those two notes is now empty. <laughs> my schedule is gone and so is that fire alarm note. We'll use emergency exit stairs to get to the parking lot faster. Miss Web, Web, Blah. Miss Web moves ahead of me and in the opposite direction of the pitch black stairwell. I follow. Won't we set off the fire alarm? We should, but it's broken. That's probably against some regulation, right? You should put it on your to-do list for your club. We walk from the exit stairs, through the parking lot, and then step into her car. I tell her my address and we start to drive. After a couple minutes of silence, I break the ice. Sorry for the trouble. She glances at me unfazed. How did you fall? I don't remember exactly. I look out the passenger side window. Do you remember non- exactly? If you're being bullied, I need to know. It's not that honest. Well, a bump on the head gives you a pass. Please be more careful. The ride is quiet again. I'm not sure for how long. My mind wanders. That's fine, Yonte. Your project with Turner, Mr. Underwood. Was it your idea or his? I think both. I asked what I could do to help for a part-time job, and he recommended it. So it was your decision? It's something you wanted to do? I hesitate. Definitely, yeah. Do you want to join? She laughs lowly. I'm not a student anymore. I've had my fill of groups in college. Maybe we can help you. For a start, I can come in early tomorrow and help you finish unpacking. You're dead set on it, huh? Her focus returns to the road. If you mean it, I'll be in the classroom around 7. There's no pressure, though. It would take us no more than 30 minutes. Thanks. Do you want my number? Ha! Huh. Are you always so bold or just with a head injury? I feel my cheeks flush. No, but thank you. You can call the school and ask for me if you need to. I nod. Is this it? We've arrived at my place. Miss Webb pulls the car closer to the parking area. Yeah, the one to the left. Thank you for the ride. There are no cars parked next to the building, and all the lights are off. Miss Webb looks like she's about to ask me something, but it seems but seems to change her mind. No problem. Do you have a, a key to get in? Yeah, I'm good. All right, see you at the school. Miss Webb waits for me to go inside before driving away. I'm greeted by a passionate meow. I know, I know, you're the one who couldn't go out this morning. 
After flipping the light switch, I take my chicken strip from my pocket and place it into Jester's food bowl. With that occupying him, I walk through the hall to my room and settle in for the night. A cool glass of water, a healthy dose of acetaminophen, wow, acetaminophen, and a change of clothes refresh me. There's a little scratch on my head that I can trace with my fingertips, but it doesn't hurt. Scabbed over, probably. I sit on my bed and pick up my charging phone. I'm already winning. I gave you my number. Information asymmetry is too fun to ruin. Truce, let me be the president. I need... What? Typo. Not happening, but feel free to concede gracefully. I added the number to my contacts as Alice, and I stare at my phone for a few seconds. After putting it beside my pillow, I turn off my bedside lamp. Bright and early as promised, at least on my end. Someone other than Miss Webb shows up and to my surprise, stops to unlock the door. Rosalind shoves the door against the wall with a slap. What are you doing? Going in, you coming? I follow her inside, closing the door behind us. Leave it open, man. After muttering an apology, I reopen it. Okay, so really, what are you doing? I owed Sam a favor. Are you good? She leans on the door frame and gives the room a look. Who is Sam? Your teacher. You mean Mrs. Webb? I praise her. My eyes moving over her body. She stiffens. I highly doubt her idea of you helping was to open the door for me this morning. Why don't we get started? It'll be quick. Come on, Ross. I could use the company. Fine. What do I do? I'm not sure about what to do either, so I improvise. See those boxes? You can divide out the supplies and I'll set up an easel per workstation here. Bar bossy, aren't ya? You literally just asked me what to do, you know? So let's get to it. Her fingers trace the edge of Mrs. Webb's desk as she moves to the box I indicated. Sure. This is for Sam, not you, so don't get weird ideas. I smile. We set up the room for classes to come, and to my surprise, Ross pulls her weight. Why are you up so early? She ignores me. Where is Mrs. Webb anyway? She's just busy. We continue, and once the cardboard boxes have been cleaned out, I begin ripping one in half to tear into compact strips. Hey, quit it, dumbass! Ross kicks me, causing me to stumble and turn abruptly. My god, why is everybody so violent to this kid? Ow! What the hell? She snatches the torn box from me. Don't you think she'll want to reuse these or recycle them for something? Oh, you're right, sorry. With a huff, she pushes the boxes behind Mrs. Webb's desk. So that's it? I think so, yeah. We've got some time before class. <laughs> and? I step a little closer. Yesterday, what were you asking Evan to do? Ha, <laughs> that weasel. I used to get him to do my math, and now he's too scared. You wanted him to do your homework? Just the math. It's not like a need to solve X in real life. We're well past solving for X, but I decide against letting her know. Are you bad at it? It's not that. I don't do it because it's pointless. Why do you even care, man? How about I help you with it? I'm not a weasel. Sure, I won't stop you. But not for free. What did you pay Evan? She scoffs. Nothing. Okay, five bucks for each assignment. You're kidding, that's more than fair. Just do one a week if you don't like it. She glares into the hall. I'll think about it. 
She starts out, but then I move in front of her. What? Give me your number. Thanks for following. Kakuts 14? I don't think you're, <laughs> I don't think I'm your type. How else are you gonna give me the assignments? Unless you rather have my address. Oh, yeah, it's fine, I guess. She recites her number as I add it to my phone. I grin. Great, thanks. Sure. She pushes past me and I'm left in the room alone. I lift my phone. Hey, did you give my number to Alice? No, Holly might have. Holly has my number too? She asked for it yesterday. She didn't text you? My fingers brush the rough texture of my jeans as I slide my phone away. My eyes linger on my thigh. I'll just go to my first class a bit early. It's still quiet, but I'm sure students will begin filing in shortly. Just like this morning when I came up, the stairwell remains pristine. I touch my head. It feels better, but the scab might actually be smaller today. It probably just looked more dramatic than it actually was at the time. I move out from the stairwell into the hall. I spot Kane standing outside my next classroom. He's leaning near the door and looking at a crumpled piece of paper in his hand. I search for an exit to avoid him, but he looks up and waves me over. I doubt sprinting away is an option, so I approach. Yeah? How you doing? He holds out his hand. The paper is my schedule from yesterday. Did you take this from me? He stands straight and places it in my hand. Found it. Figured I'd give it back to the owner. Okay, thanks. My insincerity isn't lost on him. I want to talk anyway. Listen, I really didn't mean anything yesterday. I don't give a damn, honestly. He steps closer. Sorry for the little shove. No hard feelings, right? Right. He ruffles my hair firmly, irritating my scab, ouch. I step back. Good, since we've resolved things between us, there's no need to bring it up with anyone else. Do you agree? Yeah. Is that it? A flash of irritation moves over his face. He looks past me. Almost. I heard you and Alice are starting a group. I'm not interested in Alice, but that's what you're getting at. He laughs. It's genuine. She's not interested in you. No, why are you doing it? I'm helping the school. Bullshit, what do you get? Well, it's a paid position. Not much, but something. Huh? Okay. Then why does... He rubs his neck and glances over his shoulder. For a moment, it seems like he's going to ask me something else, but he shrugs. Forget it. Tucking his hands into both pockets, he leaves me to linger in the hall alone. I'm thankful. I rotate my schedule from one side to the other. My name isn't on it. My pocket vibrates, so I swap the paper with my phone. Check your locker. Oh, hey. Holly, right? No response. I do have a little more time before class. I can humor her, I guess. I'm going to have to charge my phone more often at this rate. I approach my locker. Maybe I'll regain that middle school popularity I enjoyed after a while. Evan's right about it being weird to start the year, but it'll even out. My head numbs instantly. I slap my hand over my mouth. A severed human hand lies in my locker. Beneath the detached wrist, a red pool has collected. I can't even scream. After I recall, my back hits against opposing lockers. Wet streaks natural down the side of my open locker. The little hand is familiar. The same little hand I saw clenching a lunch tray yesterday. I can't. Why? What is this? I look around desperately and spot a silhouette turn the corner of the hall. 
Scrambling to my feet, I put my track and field training to full use. I sprinted with all my might. I turned the corner to and see. Holly. And Alice giggling at me. You fell for it. Oh my goodness, your face. Do you need to go home and change? Holly bounces and brandishes both of her healthy hands. <laughs> I'm okay, see? My terror becomes relief, but only for a second. That is a terrible prank to, to show anybody. Then I'm seething. Holly's enthusiasm fa fades as my fury registers. Yeah, that's right. We strike terror in our enemies. I approach quickly, teeth clenched. Alice looks at Holly. This is but a taste of the trials a mere mortal must endure to challenge the gods. Right, Hal? I slap her face so hard she stumbles sideways. Her glasses bounce across the floor. Lane! What the hell were you thinking? Alice's eyes well with tears. She hesitates for a moment before running away. My vision blurs before I know what's happening, my body bouncing against the lockers. I'm pressed against the classroom door and handling, and the handle digging into my back. Kane is holding me in place, glaring into my eyes. You piece of filth, how dare you! His fist slams into my face and knocking me against the door with a crack. Holly screams and pulls Kane's elbow. Stop! Stop it! We're just joking, please! The commotion has brought students over. Coach Jean shoves through them to stop us. Kane punches me again, and I hear a glass behind me shatter. My memory ends. I wonder if this game is going to be a lot more crazier as it goes. I'm in a white room in a white bed with ugly blanket. Everything looks clean at a glance. But a closer look reveals a thin layer of grime and dust. Consciousness returns to me hazily. It's a slow process, but I feel myself getting more lucid while staring at the little cracks in the wall. This is a hospital room. Why? Oh, I remember. Damn it all. Interrupting my thoughts, there's a light knock on the door. I don't bother responding. Miss Webb enters. Oh, you're awake. How are you feeling? What happened? You got in a fight after you struck a female student. Holly gave Mr. Jean the details. Who volunteered them to her, I guess? She maintains her cross arms. The student who knocked you out was suspended a couple of days. It wasn't decided yet what to do about you and the girl. Alice. Yes, Mr. Underwood convinced Principal Decker that he'd be responsible for your punishment. So who knows if you should feel lucky or not. How did I get here? While well, Mr. Jean hauled you to the principal's office, your parents wouldn't pick up the phone, and you wouldn't wake up. He called an ambulance, then... He said he was going to, but I said I'd take you to the ER. Here we are. None of your emergency contact numbers will pick up the phone, so I've been stuck here. I look at the clock. It's a little after 10 in the morning. Sorry. My weak apology irritates her. I could have called the cops instead. Did you see the prop in my locker? Yes, I overreacted, but damn. You're not completely at fault, but you escalated it. Can you explain why no one will pick up the phone? I don't know. Miss Webb sits next to the bed. She tosses my phone on my lap. You have one more emergency contact now. Powering it on, I see that Samantha, a new contact, has sent me a message test. I thought that was inappropriate. Your parents not responding is inappropriate. Thank you. Am I free to go? Eager, the doctor said you'd be fine with some rest, but you need to come back in a couple weeks to get the stitches out. 
I turned off my phone and looked up. I start to rub at my freshly treated wound, but she whacks my head down. What are you shocked about, Cloud? Was the slap. You also need to sign the bill and return it in at the front desk. I don't have insurance. That's why they have payment plans. Payne should pay, not me. You can hire an attorney to press charges and try that. Want my advice? Sounds like she's going to give it either way. Payne's dad won't pay for it. You'd end up spending more trying to collect. I lift the sheet and start to stand, but Miss Webb places her hand on my knee. Stop. I'll bring the paperwork to you. I obey at first. My cell buzzes. We need to talk. I flip through my text history with Alice and type, I'm really sorry I lost my temper. After staring at the draft message for the while, I decide to delete it. I can't believe I did that. What's wrong with me? I was on the edge. I need to talk to her. I'm standing by the window and ready to leave by the time Miss Webb returns. Clearly disapproving, disapproving of me being out of bed, she provides a clipboard wordlessly. The paperwork churns my stomach, nauseating. An x-ray, stitches, doctor fee, administration fee, a total of nearly $3,000. It says the office will call and mail me a couple business days to set up the payment. I sign it. Can I ride back to the school with you? She looks shocked. What? You don't have to. I can take you home again. I want to go back. For what? Turnover can Turner can wait. It's not that. I just need to. Please? She sighs. Okay. Don't make me regret it by being in even more trouble. I'm ashamed, and I don't look in, into her eyes. I won't. Jesus. She leads me out of the facility. It's not long before I'm the passenger in the seat of her car again. You're gonna owe me gas money at this rate. My teeth clench while I sit quietly. She looks me over. That was a joke. It could have been worse, you know. Did Rosalind and I do okay on the setup? What? The art supplies in your room. Wow, Ross actually helped? I yield a small smile. She knew more than I did. I haven't had the time to check for some reason, but I appreciate your help. The ride became the ride becomes quiet, and soon we reach the school. I follow Miss Webb indoors while looking at my phone. It's the period just before lunch. She faces me. Put that away and go to class then. Go on. I nod and pocket my phone. Okay. Thanks again. Yeah. With a little wave, she moves off, presumably, to her own classroom. After she turns a corner, I grab my phone again and walk. Not in the direction of my current class. You're in math, right? Yeah, so can't text much. What happened? I need a favor. Okay, what? Pass Alice a note to meet you in the gym right now. Why? Let's do it. Minutes pass. The wall just inside the gym entrance supports me as I stand waiting. Soon I hear familiar voices approaching. What's with the strategic bathroom breaks? I just, come on, come in here. In the gym? Oh my, are you attempting to take advantage of my single status? Evan catches view of me as his face flushes. N no, crap, I'm not. Definitely not. What's that? She tenses at the sight of me. I push off the wall and hold open palms. I came back to school to apologize. Evan is helping. 
Alice appraises me silently. Evan interjects. I'm sorry. She glances at him with acknowledgement, then adjusts her glasses. Alice, I lost my temper, and I shouldn't have done that. I should have never hit you. I won't press charges, don't worry. No, it's not. You have nothing anyway, is that all? I overreacted. I was really worried and... I get it. Are we done? No, you don't. You don't want the president... If you want the president role, you can have it. No, you don't understand at all. So help me, damn it. I'm apologizing. Yes, and I do not accept your apology. I don't owe you any satisfaction. The mere fact that you're so desperate to apologize, and with major concessions, hours after the incident is proof of the severity of your action. So sit with that, and know that I will not offer you peace of mind. Alice, it's... And you... While she opens the gym door to leave, she holds a glare with Evan. You're a prop. You should learn to think for yourself, or selfish people like him will always take advantage of you. She exits. What's your deal anyway? Evan rubs his biceps, slowly looking at the linoleum between us. Sorry, I need to go to class. He leaves me alone in the gym. Oh god, Lane is having a rough, 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 rough day. And I feel like Lane is like, the main character is, his parents aren't around and he has no money, which sucks dick. One second, I'm just checking. There's any raids. I'm debating, I'm debating whether I want something to eat today, given I lost my appetite. I should probably at least eat something. With the buzz, my cell phone alerts me another message from Mr. Underwood. No raids here. We need to talk. Since you have chosen to be present today, please meet me in my lunch. Uh, please meet me in my office after lunch. I don't want to respond. I don't want to go. Holly sits at my table, concern evident in her body language. Are you okay? I'm sorry for what happened. No, no, it was my idea. And I'm so sorry for freaking you out. Alice didn't want to do it, but I talked her into it. But yeah, I'm okay. She leans in to inspect me. You don't look okay. Does your eye hurt? I touched my face around my eye and realized it's sore. I hadn't noticed any swelling until now. Do I have a black eye? She hesitates and shakes her head. It, um, it doesn't look that bad. It's just a little dark. Why did you come back? My appetite for learning. I haven't actually been to any classes yet, though. I'm stuck without books anyway. Holly perks up. I got mine. Hey, mister. You not getting any food today? I put a hand on the table. It's cool and smooth on my palm. I ate at the doctor's office. Oh, well, um... So what happened this morning, exactly? Those big eyes of her water. I played a really bad joke that hurt my friends. You, Alice, Keen. It's difficult for me to empathize with Keen. I don't remember what happened after he hit me. Mr. Jean was really upset and... He said, break it up. You kids are damaging school property. I chuckle at her impression and it, and it contents. Sounds right. And, um, there's not much else. Look, if you really feel bad, make it up to us. Huh? Crying won't help anyone. Go with me and Alice to Mr. Underwood. Explain what happened. You're such a butthead. Well? I could use the support. 
and she doesn't seem to be in the position to refuse. Fine, I'll go too. Great. We're going right after lunch. The smells here are getting to me. I'm ready to leave now, but I'll wait for her to finish. My stomach grumbles and I pull my hand from the table. Before Holly can comment, I hold the phone between us. Hey, you indirectly gave me your number, right? Is it okay that I save it? Of course, text me anytime. I add her to my contacts. Will do. Holly starts to follow up but notices my impatience and instead finishes her meal. I engage with my phone in the meantime. You coming to lunch? Running late again. I'm sorry for pulling you into things. We good? We're good. Still on for the weekend? Yeah, if you have time. I'll be there. Holly snatches my phone from me. Mister, it's rude to be on your phone in the presence of a divine. It's rude to take something that's not yours. Hand it over. I hold out my hand, palm up. She winks and sticks out her tongue. Fine. I'm done here anyway. After standing, her soft fingers brush mine while she folds my hand closed over the pho cell phone. Secured. Let's go do this. I stand with a sigh and begin leading her to the administration halls. Along the way, I look back at her. Hey, did Alice ask you to join the student group too? Holly nods. I said no. Okay. What should I say? To Mr. Underwood? I'll introduce you and you'll just tell the truth. Maybe he'll lighten our sentence. She nods again, nervously this time. Um, come in. Alice and Mr. Underwood are waiting inside, though it feels like Holly and I are interrupting. Alice is sitting stiff in one of those seats across from the desk, and looking at the wall, face turned from us. Underwood stands from his desk. He addresses Holly. Hmm. How may I help you? Mr. Underwood, this is my friend Holly. Alice turns to see Holly surprised. She wanted to come with me to help explain what happened today. I pat Holly's back, goading her forward. She steps up gingerly. Mr. Underwood's expression softens. It is nice to meet you, Holly. Take a seat and start from the beginning. <clears throat> Lean, please close the door. I do so and stand to the side, taking care not to lean on the wall. Holly recounts the event, honestly and thoroughly. Alice and I lock eyes when Holly gets to the part about me hitting her, and I look down. We listen to completion. So you see, Lane... <clears throat> Lane blamed Alice, and Kane blamed Lane, but it was my bad idea of a joke. <clears throat> her hands tremble in her lap. I'm the most at fault, sir. Thank you for choosing to come forward. It was very mature. I agree. Guilt is compelling. Mr. Underwood adjusts his rolled up sleeves and I step forward. She also would like to explain the student union, sir. We're resolved to ensuring that when these kinds of misunderstandings occur, no one should resort to violence. Uh, it's right next to the... is gonna come home, home at the hotel. We're resolved to ensuring that when these kinds of misunderstandings occur, no one should resort to violence. Hey, expedition fiction? How are you today, by the way? Underwood raises an eyebrow, and Holly stares at me incredulously. She then looks at Alice, who merely grins. She's outnumbered. I'm good. It's raining outside. Um, I just came back from Christensen, the 
which is four hours away from Oslo. And right now, Saz is going to head out and pick up Hanzo, who is, I guess, 30 minutes away from here. And I'm really excited to see my dog. I haven't seen him for like a week. Is that so? Y yes, sir. He looks at the ceiling for a few seconds. He's probably deciding what to do with us. Alice finally chimes in. I think Kane's punishment was way too severe. Your input is noted, I disagree. Leans forward. In strict terms, both Kane and Lane committed assault. Unacceptable. Both of you girls caused a lot of trouble with your mischief, using that fake hand from the drama club. What were you thinking? Sir, I was overly competitive, and I took it too far. It was a prank in bad taste, and I realize it now. He glances at me before massaging the bridges of his nose. You three will perform janitorial duties for the next three evenings. For one hour after school. Ever economical. Will that interfere with the cleaner's work? We do not yet have a janitor this year, oh god. Then who cleaned the stairs? In light of the circumstance, I believe it will provide insight on the school's current needs for your group and represent a team building exercise. We're still allowed to create this group? Tentatively. I'll do it, sir. I will too. Good. Alice? Of course, sir. Mr. Underwood stands. Thank you all for taking responsibility and making an effort to move past this. I expect we will not need to have a repeat of this conversation. We nod with varying speed. Holly is particularly <laughs> emphatic. We three walk down the hall quietly at first, but eventually Holly can't contain her need to vent. Why did you make me go in there and join the club? What the heck? She lightly punches me in protest, hopping with each bop. I smirk and gi gently defend myself. Hey, we said no violence, remember? You said several things I don't agree with, mister. With my hand on her head, holding her back, she puffs up. You should feel glad. I could have gotten revenge like in the gangster movies. You were going to cut off my pinky? If I was feeling poetic, I'd make it your whole hand. Eep! She hops back. Alice watches us with arms crossed. We all got off easy, actually. I continue to address Holly. So can I count on your vote, right? I... It's only fair that I join to apologize to you that I vote for Alice to apologize to her. O okay? I give her a head pat. She swats it away in, in mock protest. That's fair enough. Thanks. The bell sounds as Alice treads closer. Her voice travels through the ringing. So you're not quitting after all? No, I guess not. If you accept my apology, I'll consider not keeping you on cleanup duty. I won't do that, but I will work with you if you remain semi-competent. I extend a handshake. Deal. Alice stares at my hand long enough to discomfort me. <laughs> and walks away. Holly shakes my outstretched hand in place of Alice and whispers, Deal. <laughs> see you after school. Ah, uh, see you. She leaves too. My stomach growls, but I can't hear it over the churn of students around me. I feel the rumble of my abdomen as I go to class. Damn, this guy's like starving. I think he only has lunch, honestly, from school. Having deciphered the angry stares from yesterday's study hall, Coach decided we should use a free period in the gym today. I sit on the bleachers alone, watching the students socialize and play on the basketball court. I'm not looking forward to unpaid cleanup duty after this. I run my fingers through my hair, carefully up to the edges of the bandage. The itchiness irritates me. Does it hurt? I flinch and turn to the tall girl from yesterday. Oh, Nat, right? She nods. It's sore, but not too bad. What's up? You're pale. 
My confusion disperses after a second and I chuckle. Oh, you're worried about me? I'm okay. She places a fresh water bottle on the seat next to me. You can have this. Ha. Ah. Hey, you never said why you weren't interested. Inviting her to sit with me, I pat the seat. She hesitates. In the paid student group, I mean. She sits a little further away than my gesture indicated. I may be going home soon. I sure hope so. The day is almost over. To my home country. I open the bottle and drink. I'm thirstier than I realized. Where are you from? Russia. My family may move back. Sorry. Now I want it. What's wrong with it? What's wrong with here? She sits and stares at me. I'll rephrase. Why do you want to move back? Friends and family. You have those here too, right? Not my brothers. Or my boyfriend. The last of the cool water slides down my throat as I upturn the bottle. I cap the empty container. That's hard. Sorry. Hope the move back won't be too much of a pain. Thanks for the water. Do you need to leave school? Do I look that bad? You appear unsteady. I smile and shake my head. It's sweet of her to worry. I stare firmly as an example. I'm fine, see? I'm going to take a little walk. Talk to you later. If she responds non-verbally, I don't see it as I turn and stride into the hall. I check my phone. No unread messages. Text Holly. Hey, almost ready to clean some toilets? Ew, no way. That's what squires are for. Left my gloves at home, milady. Quest, acquire cleaning supplies from the util utilities closet. What's the quest reward? Anti-fecal gauntlets. I'll pick up a few things up. I lift my eyes from my phone while entering the restroom. Riding under my eye with my forefingers, I inspect myself in front of the sink. I'm pale, and the shiner under my left eye is dark. I splash my face. The door weighs more than usual, but I push back into the corridor. Only a few steps towards the gym before I stop. That noise was familiar. It's from the upper floor. Deciding to investigate, I hurry up the stairs. Still clean. While climbing, I massage my gums with my tongue. A taste of copper. The second story hallway comes into view. I shuffle into the direction of the noise. And soon, I'm in front of Mr. Underwood's office. I knock on the closed door. Hello? Is everything alright? Only silence responds. I'm coming in. Just before my hand touches the knob, it rattles violently. I flinch and step back, staring at the jerking handle. What are you doing? I spin on my heels and bump into Nat's chest. She steadies me by the shoulders and pushes me back slightly. Why are you breaking into the office of a teacher? Shaking my head, I sputtered a response. No, no, there's someone in there. Nat stares into my eyes for a few seconds. After evaluating me to satisfaction, she releases me and opens the door. Empty. She faces me. We will go back, okay? I don't know what to say. I walk into Mr. Underwood's office. There's no other exit and the windows close. Besides, we're on the second floor. I'm not crazy. I think about saying, I don't say it. What's happening here? Nat clasps my hand and leads me out, gently closing the door behind us. I lose myself in thought. We near the gym. And I jerk away. Why did you follow me? To help. Why? What do you get? You need me to have a reason? She pauses as I lean on the locker. 
It is medicine. You think I'm sick? My medicine. When stressed, exhausted, ill. It is good. It is a good remedy to help someone else. I rub the back of my neck. Are you going to tell anyone? Not unless you leave again. She means what she says. Her. I avoid her steady gaze and push off the locker into the gym. I'm not some sort of troublemaker. With skepticism, her. <laughs> With skepticism, her. She eyes me from top to bottom. I reciprocate my eyes catching on her features. I have a boyfriend. Is that what's stressing you out? You don't look sick or tired. She runs her fingers through her hair and watches students play basketball. It is difficult to be separate. Her eyes flick between me and the other students. I bet if you got suspended, they'd have to take you back. Her eyes widen. They? Your parents? Her lips curve at my joke. See, you are trouble. Is it work that keeps your parents here? Yes. I plop onto the bleachers and Nat follows. She continues to watch me. Well, if you ever want to talk about it, I owe you one. What do you owe? A favor in return for you not telling anyone about my troublemaking. You forget the water. Two then, okay? Okay. Content that I'm now stationary, she retreats to the court in her usual graceful way. <clears throat> I, I palm my forehead to wipe away small beads of sweat. Remember when you were being paranoid? You think I'm always paranoid. You are, I mean, when you said this year was weird, why? Just curious what you meant. What's going on in uh, Messenger? haunted I'm sure of it ghosts don't exist what made you think that it says Evans typing I swallow and glance at the court Nat performs a crossover dribbling past two defenders to the post This is her layup. Here's some slamming. Here's some door slamming. Loud noises from the second floor. Hello? He stopped typing. Damn it. I gather the bottles of the cleaner I'd knocked from the shelf. My first instinct leads me to bend at the waist, which I regret. With my low winds, I straighten and retreat from the dim rooms. Arms cradling the supplies. Mr. Underwood was quick to text instructions to us in the group text. And Alice was quicker to dress Holly and me with instructions of her own. I'm in the mood to sleep, not struggle for control, so I'm humoring her. Stepping over the broken glass and my own dried blood, I eased my payload across the desk. Mr. Underwood wanted us to clean the art room and the gym today. Coach Jean will apparently hold us accountable. Alice asks what A Alice asks that I handle this room while she and Holly take on the gym for the hour. I unfurl a plastic trash bag and begin my task. The glass proves easy enough to gather. My blood splattered on under and in front of the door is not easy to It's not a lot, but it still managed to cause as much mess as it could. I buff the floor with a damp rag until drops of sweat from my forehead contribute to the lubrication of the cleaning solution. I flake off a good amount of residue, but a few areas are just too stubborn. The label on the bottle informs me. 
This cheap stuff won't cut it. I take the trash to the bin outside and stop by the science lab on the way back. Will you need a ride home? Saying no is tempting as a gut reaction, but I'd, I'd have to walk though. Yes, please. I'll be ready around five. Wait in the room when you finish. Thank you, ma'am. Don't call me ma'am. <laughs> I deposit the trash bag in the bin outside and head to the science room. Expecting an empty room, I open the door without a knock. Ah. Get down. She takes me by the wrist and yanks me behind the front desk with her. What the hell? Quiet, close your eyes. Why? She holds my head down firmly as a loud explosion occurs in the middle of the room. What are you doing? Basic book functional. Alice stands up with me and we observe the fractured plastic bottle tipped over dramatically. Thin vapor puffs from the lid and small bits of plastic litter the room. I blink twice and try shaking the ringing out of my ear. What are you doing in here? Alice looks happy to answer that. I'm producing miniature hydrogen bombs and testing various mechanical methods for production and containment. You're making a bomb? Bombs, plural. Relax, Neanderthal. It's perfectly safe. I watch the smoldering bottle. Doesn't look like it. What are you doing in here instead of the gym anyway? I'm interested in the energy production capabilities of the reaction and exploring practical uses via automation. What are you talking about? Two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen, high temperature, Big boom, understand? There are many uses for explosive energy. I think hybrid cars which utilize the energy release to make more fuel efficient... E <laughs> oh my god, I can't read. Which utilize the energy release to make a more fuel efficient vehicle. Where did you get hydrogen? There's no way we just store that over here. I made it simple. There are a few ways to do it, but I combined sodium hydroxide with aluminum. Aluminum. I shake my head. Okay. Whatever. Fine. Why are you not cleaning like you're supposed to? She closes the door I had left open. I'm not going to be a janitor in the future, nor a housewife, so cleaning duty yields no practical experience for me. That doesn't matter. It's punishment. You know, I could tell Mr. Underwood about this. I know that you couldn't tell Mr. Underwood about this. Explain. I'll deny it, an ensuing conflict would handily destroy any team building efforts and likely scrap the student union formation. And you do not want that, so you have no power here. I have the power. While you're here, want to be my assistant? She moves to the table and erects the bottle. No, did you leave Holly in the gym? I did, yes. And you called me selfish? I didn't say I wasn't too. Do you know how to clean up blood? Alice glares at me, glances at the door, and places her hand inside the desk drawer. Since I'm cleaning the art wound, I need to clean up my blood from this morning. It's dried and won't come up. Oh. She frees her hand from the drawer. Yeah, mix a little bleach with water. Let it sit on the stain for 15 minutes and wash it up after. Huh. You sure? Of course, I also have more thorough solution, but the simple method will work for your duties. She whisks me away and returns to your desk. I hesitate for a second, then open the door to leave. Thanks. Yep. I return to cleanup duty. I dust off the rest of the classroom while waiting for the solution to sit, and afterwards rub it clean. Alice's method works well, actually. Some tiny patches remain on the door. I doubt anyone would complain when seeing this improvement. Or maybe they would. But what's choke cherry high without a few blood stains? Will you please help me? With the cleaning? Yes, I'm all alone. Please, please, please. I could help her. Then again, we're already even in my book. While I'm waiting for Miss Webb, I could check the second floor again. 
Do I want to help Holly clean or check the second floor again? Evan could would be jealous. I collect the supplies and transition to the gym. I approach the bench along the court. Holly lies on her back, immersed in her cell phone. She hasn't noticed me. What are you doing? Holly hops up and stumbles wildly, nearly dropping her phone. Um, uh, hi. That was fast. And that was suspicious. Well, it shouldn't be, because it's not. I scan the area. There are no cleaning implements, which fuels my suspicion. Where are your cleaning supplies? Alice is getting them, remember? Remember? For 40 minutes and you didn't think to check up on her? I most certainly did. I texted her when she was helping you for a bit. She said to text you for help later since you would both finish early by working together. Damn it, Alice. I pushed my palm across my face. Fine, and why didn't you start there? She looks down in her palms. Smile faded. You both had the supplies. Then why didn't you come help? Or ask for our supplies. Seriously. Her eyes water. Her hands clench together in front of her. She mumbles. What? Speak up. The blood. I didn't want to see it. My eyes widen as I re realize why. Damn it. I shouldn't forget that. It's okay. I'm here now, so let's just finish up quick, yeah? She nods solemnly, and we begin our task. I glance at Holly periodically to confirm her status. A few minutes pass. I'm sorry for not being around as much over the break. I know Evan wanted to hang out too. It's okay, I... I really was working a ton. Besides, I thought you might want some space for a while. She's, her smile returns. Everyone thought that at the same time. It probably didn't help that I had to get a new phone number. How about I make it up to you? Want to spend time with me and Evan this weekend? I push the white dust mop over the floor, moving away from her. Maybe, if you promise to make it fun, my time is top tier. You, bo you boys must earn it. We'll figure out something out. So long as you're not sick of me by the end of our punishment sessions. Punishment sessions makes it sound way more kinkier than it is. As I near her with the mop, I wiggle my eyebrows. Do you want it to be kinkier? No, bad. I chuckle and continue dusting at the court. Holly picks up the trash from under the bleachers. The garbage stretches out the trash bag she used to gather it. I approach as she grunts loudly, struggling to lift the bag. I cross my arms and watch her. Need help? <laughs> Not from a peasant. I'm more like a mighty warrior, fresh from battle, adrenaline still pumping through me. I point to my bandage. So come on, give me that. Gripping beneath her two, t two hands with one hand, I squeeze the bag, close tightly, and lift, up, lift it over my shoulder. My other arm cradles many of our supplies. Mighty indeed. How chivalrous. She scoops up the remaining dust mop, and we journey to the janitor's closet. Can I ask you something weird? Sure. Wait, maybe. Have you heard or seen anything weird around school? Holly looks up at me, examining my forehead as it beads with sweat. What do you mean? Loud noises, banging, and thuds from the second floor. Nope. I could ask Granddaddy if there's construction. I shake my head quickly. No, it's not that important. I have the trash bag into the dumpster with a grunt before we move back inside to the closet. Hey, are you okay? Yeah, it's been a very long day. We restock the shelves with a slightly dim dim Ugh! We restock shelves with the slightly diminished supplies. Or at least I do. Not sure what Holly is doing. From behind I hear the faint click of the door closing. I turn to look down at Holly. She's close, looking into my eyes. Our valiant hero, war torn and battered, deserves a reward. I feel my cheeks flush. What did you have in mind? Do you know what harvest goddesses are known for? 
Their fertility? She giggles and squeezes my hand. Yes, but also their healing powers. What are you doing, silly? Shh. She massages my hand slowly with her soft fingers, pressing into muscles of my palm. Then she slowly works her way down each finger. She routes between each and every joint. Carefully, she rolls her slim fingers all over my hand. My eyes close, shoulders relax. You're good at that. Shh. Her voice is a whisper. My hand rests limp in her grip while she systematically fondles me. Fondles her? His hand? I did this at con sometimes. Booth babed strategies to learn the otaku. <laughs> I speak in whisper too, completely relaxed. I bet it worked well. She hums. I open up my eyes in time to see her parting from my hand with a kiss. Her lips were warm. We're both blushing. With that, dear warrior, the ritual is complete. You will be fully rejuvenated with 110% health upon resting at the end. Wow, what a buff. Do I get one if I do all your work tomorrow too? Maybe. Well, too bad. You need to pull your weight even if you're tiny. <laughs> She spins around and swings open the door before hopping out. I follow with a stupid smile on my face. Ha. Holly ran away, silly girl. I repeat the thought of Evan being jealous with my time with Holly. Probably best to spare him every detail. I feel unsteady. My fingers dig into my shirt beneath the jacket above my heart. The smooth polyester cotton fabric confirms to my grip. Ready? My hand returns to the side of this. My hand returns to my side at the sound of Miss Webb's voice. Yeah, Miss Webb? Her eyes flick over me. Ask me on the way. Do you? Her eyes lock to mine once we reach the first floor. Stay home tomorrow. What? I didn't stutter. Why? My vision blurs and I hold out my hand over my eye. She pulls my hand down. Are you serious? Maybe she's right, but... I can't. I have to clean as punishment. You can. You have my permission. Do you know Mr. Underwood well? Rolling her eyes, she resumes our walk. I know him a little. Called him Turner, so I was just curious. What was he like? Like he is now, but happier. Rosalind leans against Miss Webb's car as we approach. She notices my curiosity. Sam's my ride. Do you normally ride with her? Sometimes. Miss Webb slides into the front seat. It's unlocked. Roz and I join her. Seems like they're in quite... Seems like they're in a quiet mood. That definitely works for me right now. I wonder if she's dropping me or Roz first. My attention turns to the window. I'm so tired. What a day. I smell Miss Webb's lavender air freshener. And I think one of them is wearing a pretty perfume, actually. I drift to sleep for a bit. Hey, we're here. Looks like my place was the first stop. Thanks again. Miss Webb offers me a long look. Get some rest. I immediately after I step out. Immediately after I step out, Roz climbs into the front seat to replace me. Shoes, what have I told you? Come on. As I walk away from their arguing, I notice Jester curled on the front step. I bend to pick... <laughs> I bend to pet his back. Hey, buddy. This morning I could have sworn you were being stubborn again and stayed inside. Jester lifts his rear to press into my hand. I step in front of the door and hold the knob steady while reaching for my key. But it's not locked. Looking back at where Miss Webb's car was, I confirmed they already left. I hesitate. Opening the door slowly, I step inside the dark entrance. 
I eased the door closed with an inaudible click. Light rustling can be heard from my room. I inch towards the kitchen, one hand following the wall to keep me steady. My eyes adjust to the dark. I slide a large kitchen knife from its holder. The sharp tip faces outward as I wield it in both hands. The rustling continues. I hold my breath and move closer. What was that click? The sound is more dis The sound is more distinct right outside my door to my room. I kick the door open and face the intruder. Ah. What the hell do you? I lower my weapon. What are you doing in here? Evan pressed himself against the wall, takes a step forward. I, I was waiting for you. Yeah, why were you messing with my shit? I was bored. Wow, uh, I've been here for a minute, huh? I don't hide my irritation. How did you get in? The spare, the key, the extra one you keep behind the stairs. Note to self, don't leave a spare out. You don't have to stop, not on my account. I won't tell anyone. About the key, I mean. My anger fades. I lift the knife again. Guess I'm gonna have to kill you, huh? Very funny. What are you doing in the dark? I set the knife on my bedside table and flick the light switch. The light does not turn on. Your power is out, I think. Great, I rub my face. Okay, so why are, why are you waiting for me? It is creepy, Cloud. I couldn't say it in writing. You never know who's, who's who else is gonna see it. Say what? What you said, it's true. The noise is at school. I think... I hold up my palm. No, it's not. I was joking. You're being ridiculous again. No, I'm not. Well... No, I'm not. Not this time, honest. I sit on my bed. Look, I'm really tired today. Lane, I'm serious. I wonder why Lane is going back on what he said, because he did hear shit happening in the school. Also, give me... Split second. Anybody still? I'm serious. I am too. Out. He doesn't budge. I I go in the library instead of the study hall in the afternoon. Yeah, it feels like unless there's half the students missing, Coach wouldn't notice. As long as I don't do it too often, it's okay. But I've been doing it more. Congrats on your new level of delinquency. Looks like he's choosing his words carefully while he avoids eye contact with me. I'm not the only one in there, I mean. I've seen Principal Decker and Mr. Underwood talking. They were arguing today. About what? Well, I couldn't hear well, but they were talking low. Talking quietly. I think Mr. Underwood said something about a sustainable solution. I don't understand the problem. They were just talking. Most everyone at school knows things are tense because funding was cut. I, bis I massaged the nape of my neck. That's well, yeah. They were really serious. I felt like if they caught me, I'd be in a lot of trouble. Of course, because you were skipping class. But why would they keep meeting there to have important conversations? I don't know, but I do know it's probably not as nefarious as you seem to think. How do you know that's not normal? But it's not really that abnormal. Look, I'll go with you tomorrow if it makes you feel better. Okay, good. Right at the study period, right? Yes. Jeez, you need to relax. He stares at my bandage. 
I need to relax? What about you? What about me? Sorry, I mean, what's going on lately? Are you okay? I chuckle. I've got a serious headache, but I'm fine. Why are the lights out? It's me, I just got home. I'll call the power company later to figure it out. Where's your mom? His concern becomes frustration. Why have you been like this? What's wrong with asking for help? You, you clearly need it. I stand up. I clearly need help, huh? Evan steps back. I didn't mean it in a bad way. It's not bad. How do I need help then? What the hell do you know? I don't know. You're right. I just think it's okay to ask for help. I'll help if I can. Well, I don't need your fucking help. Oh my god, I wish you would be more honest. This guy, this kid. Then why did you ask me to join the group? Because I knew you'd say yes, because you always do. You rely on me too much and you obsess over what I'm doing. Get your own damn life. Get a single other friend if you can. You need to leave. Evan gently places the extra key on my dresser and exits. Jesus, why is this kid so bad? Evan's such a nice friend. A good night's rest cleared my mind. I'm ready to focus on securing the president role and earning my part-time job. How is he going to get that when you just pushed away your best friend that was going to vote for you? That's crazy. Unfortunately. Do you mean Alice's club? Well, no, it's not exactly a club. It's like a part-time work for Sewell. And Alice isn't. Oh, I can't. Sorry, I've got lab and drama ready. It's not an easy sell after the girl disappears in the hall among massive students. I approach a few more who respond similarly. Some already have heard about it, I guess, from Alice. Those just say they want nothing to do with it, oddly enough. A couple of other students are even repulsed by the idea. No, it doesn't count as extra credit. It's paid kind of like an internship. But why did they fire so many teachers if they need help? It's stupid. Well, I don't know, but it's pretty good opportunity for us. Uh-huh. I've got to It's a class. I stop him with a hand on his shoulder. Me too. Hey, don't you want to make our school better? What the hell? Get off of me, crazy. He shoves past me and I watch him leave. They just aren't interested. And why should they be? I'm asking them to be my underling for minimum wage. It makes sense why other seniors are the most annoyed by it. Mr. Fox, was it? A gentle hand rests on my shoulder, causing me to turn my attention to Principal Decker. Oh, sorry about that, I... Everything's okay. Please don't worry. Are you alright? Yes, ma'am. She smiles warmly. Good. I just saw the results of your work yesterday. Your team did well. Our team, huh? Ah, thank you. Do you know what we should work on later today? Oh, I'm sure Mr. Underwood will offer more direction. I'm pleasantly surprised by this alternative pus punishment so far. I'm not sure what to say as her eyes move over me slowly. Please don't let your work with Underwood interfere with your studies, okay? I nod. I won't. Um, I better get to class now. That's wise. Have a good day. At first, I wait for Principal Decker to move away. She doesn't. I go to class. It's worrying. Concentrating in class has been difficult since so many students have refused to listen to the pitch. And effectively, there are a few hours remaining to talk to students about joining the program. Probably less given that they have also plans for their free time. I linger in the cafeteria entrance, recognizing that this day, this is a key opportunity. Two points concern me. One, I don't know whether we have enough students to form the group. Me, Alice, Evan, Holly. Assuming no one changed their mind, we need at least one more to even form the group. Hey, Di, Di Paolo. I'm good. How are you? It's raining a lot right now in Oslo. I just got back from Christensen, so if you're wondering why I wasn't streaming for a week, it's because I was away. Students file past me and form a queue. 
I moved to the wall outlet to change my to charge my phone. Two, I need to achieve majority vote and secure the president role. Otherwise, hey you, space cadet. Alice stands in front of me, pulling from my thoughts. What space? Well, you're definitely not on our planet right now. Why are you ignoring my texts? My phone died. I. Likely story. Anyway, stop asking everyone to join the group so haphazardly. You're making it more difficult for me to talk to them. That doesn't make sense. I'm just asking. I press my shoulder to the wall. Besides, I'm not asking everyone. Just some. No more than you, probably given how many people you're also sabotaging for me. I don't buy it. She steps closer. You're way too aggressive about it. It's coming off as desperate and putting people off. Students are already di disinclined to listen. That's not my fault. Of course they're skeptical. Hey, you want to be my subordinate for a couple hours for a week to for pittance instead of whatever your plans were? Oh yes, perhaps I should rephrase it exactly like that. Coming from me, maybe there are a few weirdos into that. But you're right. Apathy is a plague of our student body. Yeah, so... Good luck in your late games. She lifts her finger to cut me off. Which is why we need to be more measured about how we approach students. Quality over quantity. We only need one more warm body. We do, huh? I thought you said you already had enough voting for you. Well, that didn't pan out exactly. Anyway, we need another. I wish I could call her Bless more often. What are you telling me to do? I'm not going to stop asking people. I'm requesting that you adjust your strategy such that it is beneficial for both of us. Focus on a few likely candidates to groom. So you can focus on lying to people to collect more votes? She disengages physically, turning away. Think about what you will. But if you ponder it, you'll realize my advice is sound. Alright, before you go, have you seen Evan today? Evan, huh? Tough one. He's like a ghost. Now he's absent. He wasn't in calculus. Why? I was going to ask him to help recruit people. Good thing he's out then. Later then. Think about what I said. Sure. Later. She adds herself to the line of students getting the lunch and I sit down to review my missed texts. Sure enough, she sent me a few this morning, chasing my recruitment approach. I also have one from Ross. Yo, I have weekend math homework. Wanna meet? Yeah, but probably tomorrow. Is that okay? Yep. I hold my head and lean forward on the table. Alice is right that I need to choose wisely. Okay, then who? I turn my phone in my palm and rub my thumb over the smooth touch screen. Roz would never go for it, would she? I spot Mr. Underwood walking towards me and straighten my back. He has a full lunch tray in hand and coffee mug in the other. Morning, sir. Black. He places the tray in front of me and sits. Good morning, Lane. Is this mine? He traces the rim of his shrink with his forefingers and stares at me for a few seconds. Yes. I heard you have not been taking care of yourself. I want to check on you. Thanks. I'm not all that hungry, though. Regardless, that is yours. How have you been feeling? Yesterday was rough, but today it's much better, I think. Do you normally eat in the lunchroom? He smiles. Most often, I make use of my office. I begin eating since I'm actually starving. He takes a slow drink and doesn't point out my contradiction. Probably out of politeness. Mr. Jean reported that the gym was clean well. Holly and I teamed up before the end of the end to take care of it. Yeah. I see. I resume my meal as he relaxes. His comfort doesn't bode well for any chances of breaking any. I'll make the best of it. Hey, have you talked with the school board about the group? I have. There has been a lot of pushback from those who believe that student programs should be purely academic. Do you mean it won't be an option? He looks into my eyes. It will. The five-count threshold would be an absolute minimum, however. 
If you gather more, my arguments would hold more weight. Honestly, it's been a bit hard. Nothing worth doing is easy. I wonder to myself whether or not that's true. Would you be able to help? I know you're busy. In general, I need to be passive observer and overseer, overseer for it to be a success. Sorry, but why? The point is that capable students are able to act as a competent and self-motivated unit. You recognize that I have limited time. He straightens his back, a small stretch. The more effective you are without my aid, the more likely you will win additional work hours. Do you understand? Yes. There is also concern with the risk when formally employing students. I will need to absorb that risk, pay in cash, structure it carefully. The upfront time and investment is, for me, is high. Did, um, what did they say about what happened yesterday? I avoided eye contact. Elaborate. The fight. The incident with Allison Kane. Wolfman back? How, how was Hanzo? Now you need to tell us a story. Miss my dog. Or our dog. Hanzo! <laughs> oh, female dogs, what kind of dog? So he likes to play with female dogs. Hey, Tro Tri Gadro. My dog just came back. Picked him up from the doggy kennel because we were away in Christian's. Must be so happy. Does he smell? Cool pet, yeah, it's a husky. But yeah, I'm so happy. I, I I hope he missed us. We weren't around for a week, and he went to a kennel, and apparently he he has um. So the kennel I picked out, um, there's an indoor area and an outdoor area, like a personal space for him, and then they also have this communal uh, foresty area that's like fenced off so the dogs can play freely in this area and apparently he hangs out with three female dogs <laughs> is he a womanizer <laughs> that's so funny though so cute. he takes a long drink of his coffee I know we haven't seen him for a week. I'm so happy. Oh my God, you're wet now. I, I know. Then smiles. They are not aware of it. What? Why wouldn't they be? Only a few, only a few faculty members know of the incident, and all have agreed to leave it to my discretion. You're being punished for it, and you understand the unacceptable behavior. I see no complicate of our project or make it public record. <laughs> you think he's a pimp? <laughs> Do you? Quickly, I shake my head. No, thank you. A lot. He stands. Take care of, take care of me and I will take care of you. Be sure to eat and find a good working rhythm with Alice. Yep, he's a Siberian husky. Yes, sir. 
Mr. Underwood exits the cafeteria and I resume eating. A twinge of guilt passes over me, but I notice that I won't be able to contemplate it for long. Holly hops to my table. Finally, fate wants to pull us apart. What's up with that? What are you talking about? Her sleeve cover hand smacks the table for emphasis. I have to maneuver around Alice and Scarywood to see you now. Alice doesn't want you to talk to me? Figures. N no, I'm... well, sort of. Anyway, why are you afraid of Mr. Underwood? He's really serious. I grin. Ha. Does this... does the Grand Goddess take on a form of frightened animal in the presence of her superiors? She snatches my only slice of pizza. Failing to stop her, I swipe the air. My reflexes are slower than usual. I hope you remember the blood pack, boy. Consider it repaid. Uh, could we complete the pack tomorrow? I'm hungry. She licks the pizza from the top to the bottom, making a show of it. My cooties have cleaned this morsel, mortal. I face palm. No, you know what? Taunting me, she wiggles as she takes a bite of the slice. I'm okay with the liquor too from you. You'll just get slobber, boy. You may grace my hand with an apology kiss again if you like. Eep. She runs away frantically, bumping into a student walking to his way to his seat, which causes him to spill his drink. She apologizes without stepping, without stopping, and he angrily shouts after her. She has way too much energy for me right now. While adjusting my bandage, I watch the students chatting around me. Right after this afternoon's library visit, I need to choose a single person and convince them. No matter what, I need to do whatever it takes. <laughs> He's chilling on the couch. Look at him. My still bruised face looks back at me in the mirror. Swelling hasn't gone down much, and I expect I'll be carrying this proof of defeat for a few more days. Evan has been out the entire day, and he also hasn't texted me. That's fine, though. For recruitment, I've narrowed down to two decent candidates. I could ask Ross. She may be willing to be a member in name only. She wouldn't have to do anything, and I'd offer to do her homework as much as she likes. Then again, that could be pretty burdensome for me. The other option is not. She's stubborn, but she's got to be lonely. She may be more open if I push more. I step out of the restroom and stroll to the school library through the empty hall. I'd like to say that I'm not entirely sure why I'm doing this without Evan, but I know why. If I'm honest, it's because I'm worried he could be right. The library door hangs open in front of me. If I recall, it's normally kept closed. Unlocked, actually. I may be invading Mr. Underwood's privacy, so I steal myself for what I can find. I'm just taking a casual look in the library. I'm skipping class to do it. I'll look back and wonder if I should just... I go in. Immediately, I see Natasha bent over, on her hands and knees, with her head under a table. Not? She hits her head on the table as she stands. Ah, oh, you. Yes, me. What are you doing? Your relaxed eyes scan me from head to toe. What are you doing? I rub my sore eye. Look, I know turnabout it's fair play, but it's rude to answer a question with a question. She's watching me patiently. It's almost unnerving how still she can be. Fine, I came in here to look for a book about Mr. Underwood. A lie. Why do you say that? Your body is honest. Are you suspicious again? Her poker face is unwavering. I'm not making trouble. I said I wouldn't again, didn't I? I warned you that I will expose you to the teacher if you allow poor decisions twice. Fine. You? What class are you supposed to be in right now? Gym, and I will attend soon. So we're both being naughty. She steps closer. Does provocative language pleasure you? Uh, what's under the table anyway? Nothing now. I took a personal item. Oh, you dropped something? Clean. What? You need rest. Please stop humoring your suspicions. 
It's not mine, it's Evan's. He wanted me to take a look in here. Where? He thought Mr. Wood and Principal Decker were arguing in here. Her eyes leaving me as she adjusts her hair. So. No. We will look together, okay? Then we will both go to class. She takes my hand and leans deeper inside. I do not object. And mutter a reply. That works. We can make it quick. Yes. As we walk between the bookshelves, I realize I'm distracted by the physical contact. Her hand grips mine securely. It's not as soft as I expected. Her palms are mildly callous. You don't need to hold my hand. I'll follow you. I pull away from her, triggering a small ripple of disappointment within myself. Ah, okay. You shouldn't do it anyway, yeah? It's not romance, it's like leading a child. I'm not wounded, not helpless. What are we looking for? She smiles. You're missing marbles. Very funny, I feel much better today. What about you? She continues marching through the library and I follow. I am okay. You're lonely. She locks eyes with me for only an instant. Maybe some. Homesickness. My boyfriend calls every day though. Sounds like a healthy relationship. Do you have those? No, not yet. I'm working on it. She steps onto a stool and holds her face close to a row of books. What are you doing? Do you smell it? I sniff and close my eyes. No? She hops down and resumes her patrol. What do you smell? Nothing, I was wrong. Are you happy yet? Um, no, but I'm working on that too. I mean with the search. My face shades red. Oh, I think so. Are you happy? I'm also working for it. For the room, I am satisfied. We will not find evidence here. Yeah, I'll agree there's nothing much to see. Thanks for humoring me. You find me funny. No, I mean thank you for your help. Without a perceptible response, she leads me to the entrance. Before we leave, will you please give me your phone number? Nat lifts her phone without hesitation. Was she going to suggest it too? Okay. That was easy. I add her to my contacts. Text me when you feel suspicious. I will help you from getting in trouble. Well, I can't promise to do it every time. She stares me down with her poker face. I'll try. You owe me three now, is that right? Ah, since you never gave me a straight answer, we'll call it two. Hmm, time for class. I take a seat at the table she was previously underneath. I'm going to catch on some missed texts first. You go ahead. She frowns. Oh, come on. I'll go soon. We'll call it three after all. The number will mean nothing if it goes forever grows. With the next sale, she moves through the door. I will return if you do not tell me what that you leave soon. I wave her off. That's fine. I'll just be a minute. She leaves and I review missed messages from Miss Webb. How are you doing? Do you need a lift? I'll be around if you do. She's considerate. I'm not sure, but I'll let you know soon. We'll leave you if you're not ready by six. Ah, that's fair. I pull back from the table and move around the room. There are so many books here, and the dust layers the spine. The shelves are equally dirty, which adds the feeling that this whole area was abandoned. My tongue presses to the roof of my mouth. There's that metallic taste again. It's faint, but it's just like before. I can't tell if it's me or this nasty building. A knock on the door. Natasha left open earlier. Is she pro trying to pull me back into class already? I move closer. Turner? Principal Decker sees me. We both flinch in surprise. Oh, Lane, what are you doing? Oh my. Damn it. What's my excuse? I was just checking out a book and cleaning. Sorry. Oh, hold on, please. What? I don't know why I apologize. Sorry. That's alright. We were both a bit startled. Why are you here? I often patrol the school grounds. Do you have permission to be here right now? I avert my eyes. Um, no ma'am, I just thought. I talked to you about this just morning, didn't I? She steps closer. 
You should not let your project with Mr. Underwood interfere with your studies. Sorry, I just... Please tell me how the library was unlocked. How did you get in? Hi. A key is needed to lock or unlock this door. Shit. If that's true, I'm caught. I'm sorry. Let me help you, alright? Please tell me the truth. I stare at my shoes. Her fingertips raise my head. And she looks at me in the eyes. Please, you can tell me. I blush and step back. Okay. I saw you, Mr. Underwood, in here. Her eyes widen. I was worried and didn't know what to do. So, her expression is gravely serious and it's causing me to fumble my composure. It's just that I wanted to make sure you were okay. There was a lot of tension. She flushes and begins to pace. I'm glad she also needs to think because I have no idea to explain the door. Did you hear what we said? I shake my head. No. Does anyone else know? I know better to complicate this. I shouldn't say the door was unlocked earlier either. No, I wanted to learn more first. Get okay. Listen, Lane, we need to keep this between the two of us. I'm um, sure. She steps closer again, this time glaring into me. No, I'm really serious. You can't say anything to anyone. Promise me. Swear it. Okay, I didn't even really see anything. What were you fighting about? Grown up thing. No offense, but I'm basically an adult, you know? How do you- how do I know you're not being hurt? She steps back, her face showing complex bursts of emotions. I guess I can't expect you to trust me if I don't trust you. I agree with her, but simply stare at her. My heart races. She's so sincere. Okay, I'll just say it. Her voice lowers. I'm in a relationship with Mr. Underwood. A wave of relief crashes over me. Oh, why is that bad? She blushes furiously and maintains a whisper. I'm married to another man. Uh, oh, I'm... I really don't know what to say. You don't have to say anything. In fact, you can't say anything. This has to be a secret. Do you understand? Her eyes plead with me. I swallow. Yes, I promise I won't tell you anyone, Miss Decker. Her chest swells with a heavy breath. Okay. It's really not my business. You still need to tell me about what you've been doing to get in and out of here. Why don't we move to my office and finish this? I can't. Not now. I know it's important, and I promise that I'm not getting up to trouble. What? Why can't we talk now? I have to convince another student to join our group before tomorrow morning. She really doesn't like that answer. Principal Decker glances at her watch. Listen, please. This conversation is not over. You still owe me answers. I will promise not to tell anyone either. But will you meet me in my office later? I need to understand for myself what you're doing and why you're doing it. She must feel like she needs control. She really doesn't want to risk me telling anyone about what Evan saw. The balance of power in the c this conversation levels out. It almost feels like I'm blackmailing her for a time. I understand. Can I go to your office tomorrow after school? Tomorrow? She closes her eyes and gathers composure. Okay, tomorrow after school. And after you and your friends have finished your cleaning work, I'll be in my office. Thank you. I really appreciate it. With a slow start, I move past her. She stops my shoulder with a soft touch. Please, don't even hint to it to anyone. Not even Mr. Underwood. I promise. I walk the hell out of there, placing a hand over my chest as I enter the hall. Fast walking the corridor, I quickly lift my phone. Natasha needs to be assured. Don't go back. I'm heading to class now. It's almost the end of the school day. I just finished cleaning the fake blood stains from my locker. It was easier than the real deal. My phone alerts me to a group message from Mr. Underwood. Recipients are me, Alice, and Holly. Something has come up. The cleaning today is postponed. I ask that you all take on a double shift tomorrow instead. Okay, thank you, sir. I pocket my phone. The timing worries me a little, but I'll address it later. 
Now that I have time, I need to choose. Rosalind is surely hanging around the school somewhere, and I could probably catch Natasha before she leaves for the day if I hurry. She's dexterous, capable, and maybe I can get her get through to her. It's troublesome to swim against the current of students leaving, but I maneuvered through the crowd. Fortunately, Nat stands on the edge of the court with her phone in hand. She looks invested. Feeling playful, I text her. Wait. Uh, I'm feeling suspicious again. Wait, I am coming. Where are you? Natasha lowers her phone, jogs a few forward a few steps, and then slows a halt as she sees me. I wink at her and she blushes deeply. Is it a joke? I couldn't resist. Sorry. Why were you so ready to help? I hope you don't think I'm that hopeless. She begins to leave. Wait, please. I want to talk to you. The bus will leave. I'll make it quick. Join the student organization with me. I said no before. Please consider. It's a huge help to us. Who is us? It's me, Alice, Holly, and Evan. You know Evan, right? I know of all. Why do you need another? The school board won't allow it unless we have five members. I'm... She watches me with patience. I'm begging you. Please help. Why is it important? I think for a moment, but decide to be honest. I need money. Why? I'm not comfortable telling you. With a small smile, Nat moves to the rack of basketballs and lifts one. You need help, but I need to avoid involvement. You want to play for it? Why do you think you have to avoid us? It's not an issue if you move back mid-year. We just need you now. I'm not comfortable telling. Play? I snatch the ball from her grip, which she allows. Fine, but we'll play horse. Do you know how it works? No, what is horse? We take turns. When it's my turn, I make a shot first while you watch. If I make it, you have to make it from the same area I did. And if you will miss? Then it's your turn to choose where to make it, and I'll have to make it the same way. And if we miss a shot, the other is made, the other gets a point. Ah, okay. First to five points wins, got it? I understand. This seems fair enough, since I'm not awful, and I know she's not perfect. I saw her play the other day. To keep it simple, I move to the free throw line and align my shot. This one is basic, and I have a good chance to make it. The gym has empty now, which helps me concentrate. I throw the ball with a good form, and it goes through the hoop. Nat collects the ball after I make it. Ah, so I duplicate. I step back and point at the free throw line. Yep, yeah, right there. Nat jogs up to the designated spot, turns without losing momentum, and jumps backwards while throwing the ball. A clean fadeaway shot. More difficult than my standing still throw, but still compliant with the rules since she took it from the same place I was standing. I grit my teeth and she tosses me the basketball. I step farther from the basket, breathe deeply, and miss the ball rebounding into Nat's hands from the rim. It's your turn. You can throw it from wherever you want. Anywhere is okay? Yeah. But if you miss, then it's my turn again. With a tiny grin, she walks into the stands. Shooting from that far is asking to waste her turn. You could luck out and make it, and then your opponent won't. But that's hardly a feasible strategy. She made it. What the hell? Do you practice trick shots? Nat takes one step back and gestures to the ground. Here. Reluctantly, I attempt from the same spot. And missed by a wide margin. One point to her. Next, she makes it from the half court point, also far from the goal. I miss. Two points to her. Then she takes four steps back from half court and makes it from farther. I miss. Three points to her. Then she makes it while she's underneath opposite goal post, nearly full court. I'm speechless. She's amazing. But she wasn't like this the other day. What's going on? She pra pa <laughs> she presses the ball against my chest and I reflexively hug it. Can you match it? 
I sigh. Of course I can't. But I try in vain. The ball doesn't even reach the goal, falling short despite my desperate one-arm sling. I'm just not strong enough to get it there. That is four. Yeah, one more and you win. She appraises me and walks to the three-point line, farther than the free-throw line, but closer than the half-court. It's easier than her last shot. Why? At this point, I'm not surprised she makes it. I'm focused on the fact that I have a chance. I step to her spot, close my eyes and breathe. In and out. Okay. I open my eyes and focus. Make th the throw. And it goes in. Huh. It is good. Now your turn again? Yeah. I take the ball, walk right underneath the basket, and lightly throw it in. A very low exertion required. It is the easiest possible position. As close as possible. Nat looks very confused and I step back and point to where I stood. Right here. Okay. She effortly, <laughs> effortlessly makes it in. I do the same thing immediately, making an extremely simple shot. Why do it? Your turn. Shoot. She makes it again. I choose the same spot again and also make it. I understand. I smile and place the ball in her hands. We take turns making it again and again and again. And again. And again, we do this over 15 minutes. As I watch her throw it in through the basket another time, I adjust my head bandage. Are you getting tired? I am not. I am. My arms are starting to feel heavy. Me either. We continue trading the simple shots. Over and over. Why does he lie about that? You've missed the bus by now. It's okay. She tosses it up again and succeeds. How will you get home? I toss it up again and succeed. Walk. She tosses it, tosses it up again and succeeds. Me too. We continue in silence. Both of us are determined not to make a mistake. I lose track of time. Dozens of minutes pass. A whole hour passes. Then glancing at my phone, I confirm it's been nearly two hours since we started. My forearms are killing me. You must be sore by now. No, faster. She increases her pace and I struggle to match her. With less time lost between each throw, we continue. At the third hour, I am not able to match her speed anymore. It's late, my arms ache. I'm slower, but I keep making my rough toss-ups. She notices my exhaustion, but does not slow down. She's a machine. Will you quit now? You should rest now. I wipe sweat from my forehead. It's making my bandage slide around and itch, but I don't have spare concentration to scratch it. Slowly, I make another shot. Lean. Hey, you need to get out of here. Lights out. We're closing. Natasha and I look at each other. She places the ball back on its rack, and we walk out together. The sun has set, and we stand beside each other in the cool evening air. Lane, do you want to keep going in the morning? No, you have one. Well, what are you even talking about? Not losing is a form of winning. You did not lose. More than me. I don't know how to feel about that, but I'll take it. Then will you please meet me at Mr. Underwood's office tomorrow morning? Yes. Night. Watch a stroll away, stick my hands in my pockets, and walk the opposite way. Still haven't heard from Evan, despite today being the day. Time to see this through. Alice and Holly are waiting outside Mr. Underwood's office. Holly pushes off the wall and skips forward. Good morning. Feeling better? Hey, did you find another? Her smile continues through a worried expression. Oh, you didn't? I look behind Holly and Alice. What's the scoop? 
There's no scoop. No one wanted to join. Thought you were going to weave them an expert story to bend them to your will. She mutters. I was surprised you'd shoot yourself in the foot even after our talk. What is she even talking about? Nat places her hand on my shoulder. We wait here? Alice narrows her eyes. With glee, Holly hugs Nat around the waist. Their height difference is comical. Natty! Nat pets Holly. Hello again. You recruited the foreign girl? Does she understand what we're doing? Come on, she... Nat tenderly pushes Holly aside and approaches Alice. As usual, Nat needs to look down. She extends a handshake. Appraising Nat slowly, Alice decides if she is worthy. Alice grabs Nat's hand, shakes it briefly, and they both smile. Aww, yay. Mr. Underwood approaches, so we make room for its advance. Good morning. Good morning, sir. He unlocks the door with one hand, his other holding a coffee. It's steaming, and the way he's holding it seems painful. He's unfazed. Come in. We file into his office. Mr. Underwood stands behind his guests and glances at each of us in turn. I'm sorry if we, w if we don't have enough. Is the minimum that still necessary? Do you not know? Kane informed me last night that you will have enough. Kane? By looking around, I try to collect answers from the others, but they equally surprise. Kane stands in the doorway with Evan behind him. If that is everyone, please close the door. We will make this relatively quick. They move into the room and Evan closes the door. I glare at him, but he avoids my eyes. However, Kane acknowledges me directly. Your buddy told me what's up. He vaguely nods at Evan. He said you needed another body, so here I am. I see. Thanks for coming through for us. My comment was directed at the air between Kane and Evan. I'm hiding my fury with firmly gritted teeth. I can't believe Evan would go behind my back like that. Do you have a problem, Lane? Um, no. I'm just very surprised. I think it'll be good. My eyes flick to Kane, who smiles. To bury the hatchet. Agreed. Making peace is important. Alice nods slowly while reviewing Kane cautiously. It's not like she can turn him away now that he's already here. I think this is fine, too. Um, if there are any honest reservations, speak now. There are clearly reservations, but no one wants to air them out here. All right, the board agreed to let you all form an organization independent of the school to be contracted on trial basis. You all will work directly for the president of the student union, earning an hourly rate equivalent to the current minimum wage. He rests his coffee on his desk. You will report directly to the president, and the president will report directly to me. The president will be elected by vote no less regularly than annually. Any questions? Will you clarify what you mean by an independent organization? Yes, the school will not employ students. Rather, we will compensate your organization. He rolls his eyes. In no connection with the school and at my independent discretion, I will email you d details and provide guidance for your documentation. Please complete my instructions over the weekend and do not hesitate to reach out with questions. Is the president decided by majority vote? That is how I advise you to handle it. A majority vote of then current members. I'll vote for Alice. Your enthusiasm is appreciated, but we will first review the specific work of the school will contract you. Mr. Underwood goes into a spiel about our various expected tasks, including, but not limited to, staffing the library, cleaning the school, organizing events, providing administrative assistance to the faculty, tutoring students, and organizing ourselves. He highlights the importance of clear documentation communication and accountability several times over to the point we're so sick of hearing it. Holly falls asleep, but Alice dutifully kicks her, which causes her to snap awake. 
Cain leans on his first. Cain leans on his fist, waiting for the debriefing to wrap up. Evan stares at his feet. I can't tell what he's thinking. Natasha watches Mr. Underwood closely, keeping attention impeccably. And I'm listening while gauging everyone's reactions. After about 30 minutes of fielding our questions and detailing the mechanics of the group, Mr. Underwood turns up the last of his coffee. With that out of the way, you should be designated. With that out of the way, you should designate the president. Evan coughs. <clears throat> Lane would be the best fit, I think. Thanks, Evan, for what it's worth. I'm still here for Alice. And Holly and I are in agreement that I'll be president, right? She smiles at Holly, who tosses me a word expression and hesitates. I smile at her to reassure her decision. Yes. Nat runs her fingers through her hair. I will vote for Lane. I'm voting for myself too, so that makes us a 3 to 3 tie unless someone wants to change their original vote. We look at Mr. Underwood expectantly. In the event of a split, I see no reason why you would be unable to manage with two co-presidents. Could you handle it? Alice and I look at each other. Neither of us wants the outcome. Perhaps we play rock, paper, scissors? That's kind of childish. Why don't we postpone the votes over the weekend? And that's not childish? Mr. Underwood leans against his desk and looks at the ceiling. We both feel pressured by his impatience. No, it's fine. We can share it. Either break it into subgroups or manage more students or take turns leading. I like those ideas. Having two heads works since... Uh, if one of us is out, the other can take uh, the, the reins. And we'll be, we'll be able to work with more students if needed. Yes, it's fine. Maybe even ideal. We're okay with this, sir. Are you sure? We both nod. We can collect again after or during the weekend after everyone has a chance to look over that email. Mm -hmm. Mr. Underwood gestures at the door. Please also note that while you are excused from the first period this morning, all of you should continue attending class as normal going forward. Got it. Alice leads us into the hall, turns to face us, and points at Kane. What do you think you're doing? What's it look like, working with you all? Pretty simple. Fine, be that way. It's not going to win you points with me. Her attention swaps to Evan. It wasn't Lane, it was you, wasn't it? Huh? What did you do? I won't ask again. I just sent messages to people online to tell them what the group was about and warn them that your version wasn't accurate. It only served to muddy the waters and turn people off. Don't you understand that? You made it harder for everyone? Why? Evan mumbles. What? I stepped between them. He said he just wanted to be honest. Cut him some slack. It worked out anyway, didn't it? For you, I suppose. I have everyone's number. We'll reconvene as a full group on Monday. Holly will come with me. Oh, okay. Later, fellas. Alice marches downstairs and Holly follows closely. Natasha heads to the opposite way. Hey, are you going to class? Yes, yeah, shortly. All right, you can call me anytime if you need help with the paperwork. Her gaze lingers on me and she smiles. She resumes her gait. Kane and Evan give each other a knowing glance. What? She's new. I address Evan. Sounds like there will be enough work to go around after all. Thanks for pulling through. Evan nods. You can take some hours from me, probably. Holly, too. Maybe when you're in workaholic mode. Mine are up for grabs, too. Seriously, though, what are you even doing here? Kane ignores me while walking away. Aye aye, Evan. So where were you at yesterday? I didn't want to get in your way. What am I going to do with you, Evan? 
So you stayed home and what? Messaged people all day long? Somewhat. I talked to Kane though. Why? I told him about the library and. What the hell? You can't just go spreading rumors. Use some sense. Why ask him to join of all people? Actually, he asked me. He said he wanted to join, but he didn't want to go through you or Alice. Is that so? I closed the distance between us. Are you telling me the truth? Of course I am. What's wrong? Nothing. Um, do you need help later today? Cleaning? Nope. Did you tell anyone else about the library? No. Did you go? Yeah, keep quiet about it. I'll fill you in later, tomorrow when we get together. Okay. Class is gonna start soon. Later. I'll walk away from Evan and go to class. I should be satisfied. It's an outcome I wanted, but I'm uncomfortable. Like a weight is pressing down on my chest. Like my skin doesn't fit. My head hurts and I'm exhausted. I skipped lunch again, attended the day's classes and showed up for cleaning duty. Alice and Holly took the first floor for the afternoon. It's near the end of the first shift and I... I fucking told you already. Underwood said I'm supposed to clean too since I'm coming back early. I'm stuck with this guy. Ian and I stand outside the bathrooms. No, I'm asking why you want to clean with me. <laughs> and leave you alone with the girls, fat chance. Oh, am I dangerous? He shoves a bucket of dirty water into my hand. A soapy wave of sloshes from the front of my shirt. Which of these you want to start with? I grimace and look at the bathroom doors. Neither. We really shouldn't have put this off until the end of this week. No shit. I smile weakly at the pun. Ian props the door open and we start replacing supplies and wiping the porcelain. A few minutes pass. I glance at Kane. He's working faster than I am. At least you're not lazy. He returns a glance. You mouthing off again? I'm just saying that it's nice to actually help. Get help for a change. You know your buddy stuck his neck out pretty far for your dumbass. Evan, how so? Kane shakes his head and washes his hands. He's loyal, that's all. I move away from one of the stalls a minute later and catch Kane leaning against the wall. So right after a compliment, you decide to stop? Finish my half. He flicks his wrist to the side he was working on earlier. Sure enough, he completed everything. Well, don't wait around on my account. We don't have all night. Then hurry up. He doesn't budge. I hesitate, think better of it, and go back to my task. So Holly's still in her rut, huh? What? You implied she's not helping. Hey, ki cow? The cow? I guess I kind of strong armed her into joining. I rinse my hand at the sink. I told her she can take it easier than us if she wants. That's not helping her. I don't know. People grieve differently, right? Let's go to the girl's side. We transition to the other restaurant room and resume our work. I notice the sun is starting to set through the propped entrance. It's getting late. Don't even pretend like you've got shit to do. Miss Webb usually waits for me. I'm going to send her a message to tell her not to wait up. Miss Webb? Oh hell yeah, she's hot. Give me her number. What? No. He snatches my phone from my pocket. Hey. I reach for it, but he keeps me back. I decide not to protest anymore. What else can I really do? After watching him fiddle with my phone for a while, I hold out my hand. Can I please have my phone back? Say pretty please. I refuse and wait. He slaps it into my hands, stinging my palm. I go ahead and let Miss Webb know I'm staying late tonight, that she shouldn't wait. We both clean up more, but after a few minutes, I hear him mumble. What? You have Alice's number. Oh, yeah. Did you ask for it? No, she gave it to me because we were competing for the president role. Kane becomes quieter after that. He finishes before 
me again and waits. If I don't assert myself, I'm sure he'll keep pushing me around. I kind of need it, you know? Do you have an issue with it? No, I don't give a fuck. Why would I? I stare at him. You think I'm sore about it because I gave you that tiny shove? And he put me in the hospital. Aren't you? No, it was fucking mutual. She's insane. Impossible to satisfy. Deep issues. A rational voice in my head tells me just to let it go at that. Evan would, but I'm not Evan. And it had nothing to do with you? Why would it? I hold my hands up, yielding. Dunno. It's just a question. Yeah, from some nobody. Whatever, man. Move. Let's go clean somewhere else. He blocks the door. Way. Some dirt poor kid desperate for a dollar. Everyone sees through you. You're not cool. You're not slick. You sit around on your little pity potty. Okay, whatever. Just, let's just go. I don't want to fight. Because you'd lose. Yes, Kane. You fucking idiot. Of course I'd lose. Move. An idiot, huh? You're such filth. I don't even know why I'm helping you. You done? Need me to call Allison here? Or how about your deadbeat dad? King kicks our bucket over, causing the door to close behind him. Now, nah, why don't we stay for a while? My eyes dart around the room. I throw the mop handle against his face while shoving past him with all my might. He smacks it down, shouting after me before I sprint the hall. My heart pounds. I hear him behind me, running after me. My, in my haste, I slip down the stairwell and catch myself against the wall. I turn and continue the mad dash through the first floor corridors. Racing around the corner, my hand catches on several locked doors. I keep trying doors, my hands shaking wildly. Finally, I find an open room and spill into it. I crawl behind the counter in the back and breathe slowly, hand over my heart. Slow your breathing, you're fine. Lane? I flinch around and look up. It's Principal Decker. Are you okay? What are you doing? Um, uh, my... a game. She watches me intently. Me and my buddy are playing a game since we are finished cleaning early. I was just about to come see you, though, like I promised. She smiles at me with her familiar warmth. It's okay. Is it just you two left? I nod slowly. Let's go to my office then. Is that okay? I glance up the entrance to the cafeteria before taking her hand in mine and standing. Sure. Okay. I look at her. I look her up and down. Is there something wrong? Why are you in here anyway? Her calm smile persists. I told you I often patrol my school, remember? Yeah. She takes my wrist and leads me into the hall. Quickly, I look left and right, but there's no sign of Cain. I'm thankful to hide out in her office and close the door behind us. So, how are you and Mr. Underwood doing? Principal Decker's face contorts for an instant. Let's talk about you first. Are you ready to open up to me? She rests on her desk and I sit on her couch. It conforms to me comfortably. Yes, ma'am. Miss Decker pulls out the wine bottle out of her desk and pours some into a thick rounded glass. She drinks. Okay. So why the sneaking around? It's gonna sound crazy, but it started right after I fell asleep for way too long earlier this week. I stayed late and heard some weird noises. Weird how? I heard loud thuds and banging from this floor, and the school was locked down pretty tight. Miss Decker pours wine into the glass, matching her own, and offers it to me. Miss Decker, I'm not allowed to drink. I'm still under 21. Tell me, Briere. I thought you said you were an adult. Reluctantly, I take the glass and drink. It tastes sweet. I didn't find anything, I just went home with Miss Webb that night. But I kept hearing things and I think I'm probably just dis disorientation from this bump. I gesture to the stitches behind my bandage. 
the one your friend gave you? I smile. Okay. Okay, we're not really friends. I just know him from running track last year. I got on the wrong side of his girlfriend, and now I'm losing my mind. Miss Decker knocks our glasses together. High school sure, sure is a pain, isn't it? You can say that again. Thanks a lot, um... Rare. She giggles. Well, that makes an old lady happy. Keep going. Why were you in the library to begin with? You're not that old. I was, um... Are you okay? I nod quickly. Well, okay, completely honest. I thought you and Mr. Wood were up to something shady. I guess it was an instinct. You have good instincts. Huh? Since we're having an affair, is the wine good? It's Merlot. I take another big drink. Oh, yeah, it's good. I'm feeling pretty tired, sorry. Miss Deck rubs my chest with her gentle hands. Whoa. Wine is a soporific. Do you know that word? I look up at her hazily, my face flushed. Um, it's sleep in, sleep inducing, right? She keeps rubbing me sensually. That's right, smart boy. You can rest on my couch. My eyes feel heavy, but my stomach aches. Actually, it's painful. A slow burn. I push her back weakly, but she persists. Hand traveling down to my stomach. What's going on in this? Please, will you? Um, I need... She places her fingertips on my lips. Shh. My skin is tingling. It, isn't it? Something isn't right. I resist no more force, but she holds my shoulder down with leaned-in pressure. Principal Decker. Rear. Rear, I need to go to the restroom. Badly, I'm really sorry. I think it's because of the wine on an empty stomach. I skipped lunch. Her expression flattens. Is that so? You should stay, I insist. My guts feel like they are on fire. Shit, it hurts. I push her back hard, my hands shake, sinking into her ample bosom without regarding for politeness. I'll be right back. Wait. I jog out the door, empty wine glass still in my hand. Noticing this, I put it to the ground. I then push into the boys' bathroom clumsily. I miss the light switch and run straight in. It hurts. It really hurts. What's going on? I shove my forefingers into my throat and vomit into the sink. An ugly mixture of wine and blood. The smell of copper wafts back at me from the porcelain. But it still hurts like fire and I grip my chest tightly. I'm sweating. As I lay my head against the mirror, breathe slowly collecting my thoughts, I hear shouting outside the bathroom. It sounds like Miss Decker. I wipe my mouth with my sleeve and exit. My legs are still shaking and I'm only getting worse with time. Kane is holding Principal Decker back from entering the bathroom. Get out of the way, he's sick and he needs help. Kane shoves her back by the shoulders. I think you're the one that needs help. I'll call the police. Do it then. Miss Decker sees me. Lane, tell him you're sick. She's right, I think I need to call 911. With shaking hands, I pull out my phone, only to fumble it to the ground. No, stop, you should just need some rest. I know, Trish, it's intense. Me. What the fuck are you doing, lady? Kane grabs her aggressively, pinning her against the lockers. She resists, and his grip tightens. Kane, stop. What the hell? Kane looks back at me quickly. What did you have? Just a glass of wine. King of Suin is like, yeesh. Kane, deep. My gut causes me to lean against a cork. I've had wine. It doesn't do that. What did you put in it? He glares at Miss Decker, whose eyes are welling up in tears as she fights against him. You're hurting me. Kane raises his voice and pulls her hair. What the fuck did you do? 
Little guy was right. I knew you were up to something when you told me to give Lane his damn schedule. What? Let go of me or I'm calling the cops. Can you play all visual novels, like even the not safe version ones? Not on stream, of course. Um, now, I play most of the visual novels that are allowed to be streamed. I don't know, like... I think if someone was to play the not safer ones, you might as well watch hentai. <laughs> but I like doing... I like playing visual novels that actually give you a choice so you have different endings. That's the ones I really like. I love to, um, Doki Doki. Um, there are some other ones I tried that are really... I really like the... What is it called? The KFC one too. But this, this one is, this is actually a visual novel. There isn't much of a choice. It's literally like going through a story. Then you love cyberpunk then. It's not the end. Oh, when cyberpunk got delayed though, right? Let go of me or I'm calling the cops. Not going to admit it, fine. Ian grabs her arm and squeezes. I'll break your fucking hand if you don't admit you spike that wine. Ow, stop it. Please. Fucking say it. I spiked the wine. Why? Kane doesn't relent as tears become streaming down her face. Is he going to be okay? Am I going to be okay? I don't know. I'm hyperventilating. Since she doesn't respond, he yanks her hair and she yelps. Is he going to be- Is he going to fucking die? Say something. She's unable to answer through her sobs. Kane locates his locker and pulls it open. He shoves her fingers inside the gap and slams it closed with no hesitation. The blood curdling scream so loud it hurts my ears. Ow! He slams the metal locker door against her broken fingers again and warping the bones in her hand, splattering blood down the side of the locker. Yeah, I like choices, but not the type where your choice literally changes one line. I want something that possibly changes the entire story. I know what you're talking about, Hubert. I think um, a lot of the Telltale games do a pretty good job. Um, it was disappointing that Mass Effect was Mass Effect Three wasn't as changing, and I played one two, thinking that it would change three. It didn't matter if you played one or two. I had trash. Did you notice that you have more emotes? The, the tiers have changed, by the way. Yeah, you were. I loved stuff like this. I loved Heavy Rain and I loved playing Detroit Become Human. I have the, the gameplays of all the visual novels and games. Some of it on YouTube. Tell me something then. Jesus. She flails in his grasp as he disfigures her hand in a wild fear. Thank you for following you, Bear. The dab is back, and a lot of emotes, even though if you don't have tier 2 or tier 3, you can use them on Discord. So, there's that. She flails in his grasp as, she dis as he disfigures her hand in a wild fury. He won't die. He didn't eat. He looks back at me. Wait, what? Didn't you eat? Before I can respond, Decker lifts a small black rectangle and shoves it against Kane's chest. He releases her instantly and goes rigid. A stun gun. Crumbling to the ground, she overtakes him. Ah! Stop! Just stop! My voice is drowned out by Kane's shout. Decker continues applying the current directly to Kane's chest above his heart. That's enough. That's stop! Kane's body convulses weakly to the ground and foam spills from the edge of his mouth. She's not going to stop. She's not listening. I fall forward, tripping over my weak limbs. I can't even stand straight, but I have to do something. I grab the wine glass and run to them as fast as I can. Falling forward, I break the glass over Miss Decker's hand. Falling forward, I break the glass over Miss Decker's hand. Glass shards skid across the floor from the force. Instinctively, she drops a stun gun, lifts her torso in a daze. On the ground, Kane clutches his heart with his hand and gasps. He desperately kicks her away. His foot presses into her thigh and she stumbles sideways to the stairs. He 
You seem cool. I'll be definitely coming back. That's cool. Thanks for stopping by, though. Grush says, that I did saw. Hashtag blessed. <laughs> the edge of her foot misses the first step of the stairwell. Her broken fingers grope the railing, but it yields to her touch. She flips over the edge. Her legs fling into the air. At first, she falls between the flights. Ah, the impact against the railing echoes followed by a dull thud. After that, there's no sound. Nothing. Ian and I look at each other in horror. Carefully, I move to the edge and look down. Full of blood gushes from Miss Decker's head, a wound obscured by her hair. I can't register this. I wanted to ask if she was okay, but I just stare. She's not moving. We killed her. Jesus. To be continued. This visual novel has turned to be a lot different. Although the main character sometimes I want to just like poo -poo 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 -poo. He, he's kind of a uh, he he acts like a badass. He so we find about the main character, he his parents aren't around. He's definitely broke. He works odd jobs. But even when his best friend Evan approached him asking if he needed help, the minute Evan asks about like if money's being an issue, he this this guy, Lane, immediately pushes his friend away and says like really mean things to Evan, even though Evan was accepting of him, understanding his situation and offering help and I think that's the scariest thing is pushing people away when they actually confront you 